recording? Uh, just it, it's just a, in case oh, we, okay, just in cool. case we caught anything. Oh, okay, yeah, well, that's, that's fine. I like to do it so we don't forget. Oh, absolutely. Because I've been doing. I was, it. Well, the reason I was asking, I have to adjust my ball sack, <laughs> and I didn't want to do it on camera or anything yet. <laughs> oh, it is now. Did, well, fuck it. Now I don't care. <laughs> well, I got here. Let me adjust it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, no. <laughs> What's that called? Man spreading? I don't know. Hell, I, I don't like sitting like this. Yeah. I'm, I got bad hips. Yeah. Like I've had a total hip reconstruction. Yeah. So I, I'm not, I can't do this. So I've got to, I've got to go over here and it smashes my testicles and stuff. Hell, I'm yeah. 40 now. They sag, you yeah. know, they, they ain't taught I'm 35. No more. They do the same Dude, thing. They ain't taught no more. And nope. they're, but the problem is they're, they're a little bitty, you know, I got tiny nuts. Oh, so it I makes know. my dick look huge. Oh, I, I got the exact opposite. No, oh, man. It's like putting a Barbie hand on top of it. You know what I mean? It makes that fucker look magnified. Mine looks like that orangutan's head from Planet of the Apes. <laughs> This episode of Unloading Me is not brought to you by your favorite language learning app such as Duolingo, but it could be. It, it really could be. Guys, Duolingo is amazing, and if you don't take your lessons... Nothing will happen to my fam family, right? Duolingo, please, please, guys, please, please use the app, please. I, I, I miss my kids. I, I miss my kids. Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Unloading Meat. We totally haven't been talking for about two hours, and I forgot to do an intro. <laughs> totally haven't happened. Um, they, well, I yeah. went through with three of these. <laughs> My next guest, as you can already hear him, um, not Foghorn Leghorn. It is the great Brian Dixon. I'll say, I, I say what? I'll say, hell? I'll say. Oh, my God. God, that just, uh, we just went straight to fucking an appropriation, didn't we, real quick? <laughs> we, this is going to hit in like the Klan rallies, yeah. I promise. It's going to be a number one download in small towns. Up there. You've got to be shitting No, me. I told that. So, uh, uh, you know, Adam, uh, what's his name? Adam. Um, oh, Sweet Titties. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Adam. Uh, fuck, I can't remember his name. Um, last name. It's going to bother the hell out of me. They don't matter. Anyway, yeah, he was on here. I did an episode uh -huh. with him. And, uh, they talk about sweet titties. Sweet titties. Oh, God. That dude was on stage one time talking about sweet titties. I said, fuck that. I'm 40. I want to <laughs> see some bold vaginas. I've seen enough titties. Whip those wallered out twats out. I want to see them. <laughs> and, yeah. But, uh, in my Star-Lord helmet up there uh -huh. is a Trump mask. Okay. Because if you look at my helmets up there, I ha like their helmet stands. Oh, and I was yeah. like, well, how the hell do I get Star Wars helmet to stand up there? Because there's no internals to it. It's right. hollow. Uh-huh. So my dad had this like Trump mask from Halloween. Sure, your so, dad. Oh yeah. Sure. No, it was it. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nah. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> fuck that guy. Uh, anyway, it's it's in the Star Lord helmet. Uh -huh. And it just fits perfectly. So yeah, when yeah, Adam was awesome. here, I just brought it down. Uh I bet he put turned it on. He I bet made the, out with it. Dude, I guarantee that if he put it on the inside of that son bitch smells like bad decisions. It, it ended up sitting here on the couch for a bit oh, and like shit. he ended up laying down on the couch and making out with I have a picture of him making out with it. <laughs> I was like, uh, this is getting awkward. That's real awkward. Yeah. That, that, I mean, he's not even a, a hot man. You know what I mean? He's an ugly, ugly man. The only thing hot about him is the orange skin. Oh shit. I'll tell you what. It wasn't Tangerine. like a, it wasn't like a uh what was the guy's name from Barbie movie, <laughs> Ryan. Ryan Gosling? Ryan Gosling. It wasn't a Ryan Gosling man. No. Hell, I'd come in that. I promise. <laughs> I ain't kidding you. Either that or... I guarantee I'd pre-cum if yeah. I made out of the Ryan Gosling mask. I'm just going to say it right now. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm a bi individual. I can kind of just say it. If you ever noticed a kid that ate his boogers, they swallow. <laughs> <laughs> I used to shit sliding down easy. <laughs> Basically the same consistency. <laughs> Who you been fucking? I mean, if, it, if this is if, it, if it's as rocky road as a fucking booger, like I ain't getting you. Does it get stuck in your teeth like that too? Oh, you chew on it. You know it's, what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you chew on a booger, it gets stuck in. I was poor. We had yeah. that's all there was to eat. Booger sometimes. sandwiches. Yeah. My God. Put it on a cracker. Oh, uh, <laughs> I do. Hell. I am a cracker. Yeah, that's true. There you go. Well, we so. call that jerk off on a cracker. <laughs> Come on a cracker. Uh, I don't Ugh. know about that. There's some porn. I, I don't um, know. I'm, I mean, I'm. You said you went to college. No, I have gluten issues. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> I like <laughs> Gluten doesn't exist. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. The media made it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I bet it is. Celiac is non existent. Yeah. Yeah. 
Same with sickle cell. Uh -huh. <laughs> I tell you, like, I don't know about celiac, all that shit. I know lactose intolerant exists. <laughs> I know. I ain't kidding. You Holy know, shit. My and toilet knows. How come, yeah, how come everybody, like, the? I'm lactose intolerant. Me too. But I fucking love pizza. And every time I eat pizza, I've got to be within a toilet at least, by, in 15 minutes, I've got to be by a toilet. Well, my thing is I have no gallbladder. Oh. I have my gallbladder removed oh, okay. like 10 years ago. Yeah. And it's just an express lane now. Dude, so I, it's like I, 30 minutes or less on everything you oh, eat. Oh, dude, I'm not kidding you. When I eat pizza, I will knock the porcelain off that fucking toilet. I ain't kidding you. It, oh. Well, my thing is like things that tear me up now, like since no gallbladder, mm -hmm. like I can't do like pepperoni or like spicy yep. like sausages and stuff like mm -hmm. that. That shit, tomato sauce. Yeah, sorry, I'm marinara. Italian. I thought we were gonna have a shot yeah. after this, but yeah. I got that spicy pepperoni. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it tears your ass up, doesn't it? Spicy <laughs> yeah. pepperoni. Yeah. Use lube. Uh, Are we recording? Uh, just it, it's just in case, oh, we, okay. just in case cool. we caught anything. Oh, okay, yeah, well, that's that's fine. I like to do it so we don't forget. Oh, absolutely. Because I've been doing. I was, it. Well, the reason I was asking, I have to adjust my ball sack, <laughs> and I didn't want to do it on camera or anything yet. Oh, it is now. Did, well, fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> well, I got here. Let me adjust it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, no. <laughs> What's that called? Man spreading? I don't know. Hell, I, I don't like sitting like this. Yeah. I'm, I got bad hips. Yeah. Like I've had a total hip reconstruction. Yeah. So I, I'm not, I can't do this. So I've got to, I've got to go over here and it smashes my testicles and stuff. Hell, I'm yeah. 40 now. They sag, you yeah. know, they, they ain't taught I'm 35. Anymore. They do the same they're, thing. They ain't taught no more. And nope. they're, but the problem is they're, they're a little bitty, you know, I got tiny nuts. Oh, so I it know. makes my dick look huge. Oh, I, I got the exact dude, opposite. No, man. It's like putting a Barbie hand on top of it. You know what I mean? It makes that fucking could look magnified. Mine looks like that orangutan's head from Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Zayas. Yeah, Dr. Zayas. I just mm -hmm. remember, do you remember like Simpsons? They did that like parody Broadway musical episode. Dude, honestly, I was never a Simpson fan. Never, like, never. I was never a Simpsons fan. Um, I, I wasn't like I watched a ton of movies, yeah. but not a whole lot of cartoons. And uh, you know, when I was younger, I did. But yeah. growing up, I was always wrestling, so I would have wrestling practice from you know like. Late in the day. Yeah. And so I just never, until, you know, 7, 8 o'clock at night. So I didn't really watch anything except for movies. You still keep up with wrestling? Uh, no, yeah, not really. Okay. Um, like, man, every time I watch it on TV now, like, you're talking about pro wrestling, yeah. right? I was referring to, I mean, like, amateur. high school wrestling. Yeah, yeah but uh, I was a pro wrestler, too. And, man, it was like every single time I watch it, it's like, fuck. I, I, I still want to do it, you yeah. know? And so I, I, I just, I don't really do it anymore because it was just like, it gets that, that juices going yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that itch. Yo, oh, yeah, absolutely. And because I had to retire from it because of my hip. And, you know, I end up, it's a genetic thing or whatever, but it just got real bad. I ruined my joint. And I need a replacement, but I'm too young. I gotta wait till I'm like 45 to do it. Damn, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's another five years. And yeah. I mean, I'm still in a lot of pain. I need another one. I need another surgery to clean it up. But it's just like, God dang. That first one I had, man, I had it, I think, two years ago. And I was on the couch for like, couldn't put, couldn't do anything really. And, for like six weeks. Couldn't Damn. put any weight on it, nothing. And, you know, when you get a hip replacement, you're up walking the same day. Yeah. So it's like, fuck. I mean, yeah. I was like, come on. And the doctor goes, I was like, why do I got to wait till I'm 45? He said, well, the technology that we have, they, they wear out every 20 years. So, you know, we don't want you being, you know, in your 80s and, you know, being wheelchair bound. I was like, fuck, doc, I ain't living till I'm 80. <laughs> Shit. Like, have you come seen on. my liver? Like, <laughs> God dang. Like, I drink a lot. Like, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm i wild, man. Like, <laughs> fuck, if I live till I'm 80, like, I've had a broken neck, knee surgery, uh, all this type of shit, man. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be the most decrepit, <laughs> this, uh, the, the most cantankerous bastard you've ever met at 80. Yeah, you're not going to get uh, to the Howard Hughes, no, like, hell pissing no. in the jars with no. the fingernails or anything like that. No, I'm uh, like, uh, fuck, just take me out by yeah. then, you know? I know. I want to just go like the film and Louise and just drive off the cliff. I'm gonna if I ever get like a debilitating. Oh, I'm such. A, like I'm that. too much of a pussy. Like really? I, I act like I'm tough, but I'm too much of a pussy to take it. Like I, I wouldn't do it. I'd be like, well, there's still at least one more life I can ruin out there. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> not to get real, but I even joke on my podcast. Uh -huh. I'm a two times suicide failure. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I fail twice. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about life. I mean, you know, I, I think. You know, I, I grew up with a lot of trauma and yeah. stuff like that. And I mean, a lot of us comics have. Yeah. Um, That's pretty much the bar standard. Right. Yeah. But I mean, you know, there, there are times there, 
you know, there's there's been times where I mean, I had it all planned out and everything yeah. else, and I mean, it was just holy cow. But I mean, I went through some bad shit just you know here recently, and it was like holy cow, man. I you just and and here's the thing, like honestly, like my son plays baseball, yeah, and uh, last year he played for a different team, um, and but. There's this kid on his baseball team this year that played for the sister team of the other one. They had two teams, same age group. They had too many kids. Anyways, his last names, I, they had their first game Sunday. Yeah. This kid's last name's Dixon. Like, his name's Bra- Braylon or Brayson Dixon. So, whenever you look it up on the stat thing, it says B. Dixon. Yeah. Like, he's a catcher. I played catcher. Yeah. And the little bastard uh, is double zero, just like I was. <laughs> and so, I told my wife, I was like, this is my new favorite player. And she yeah. goes, you mean your second favorite? I said, no, this is my favorite player right here. <laughs> Like, I don't give a shit. Like, my stepson knows I love him, but he's, yeah. let's be honest, he's a stepson. You know, that fucker, <laughs> that fucker gets my B game at best. You know what I mean? I saved the A shit for my real Because kids. his mom's getting the D game. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> I like that one. I'm going to use that yeah, on stage. Yeah, there Jared, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stealing it. Let's go so, you go by Jared or Ralphie? You can go by Jared. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Is yeah. You, J- Ralphie, your middle name? Uh, so, growing up, I was always called Ralphie because I looked like the kid God. from Christmas. Oh, right? okay, yeah, you so, shoot your eye out. Yeah. My God, you kind of do sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I wear the glasses. <laughs> My God. It's eye protection now. Well, yeah. Uh, anyways, well, uh, let me get back to that story. Yeah. It's uh, like, uh, I'm ADHD. You're good. Fuck, I'm 90 HD. The magic man. Of editing, man. Oh, but, anyways, this, this little son of a bitch, uh, you know, he's, he's like I told my wife, he's my favorite player. Like, yeah. and uh, we were sitting there getting ready to go to practice Tuesday, and we get a text from the coach. Um, this kid's dad, who is a great guy, was is a doctor and everything else, uh, was hunting, and he slipped and fell down an embankment, and the gun went off and killed him. Wow. Yeah, and now we didn't get any details or anything like that. I mean, it could have been like, you know, just a freak shot and took him out. Or, yeah. I mean, he was hunting. He was by himself. So the guy could have been there and bled out, you know, yeah. with out in the woods. You don't have any cell phone service or nothing. Yeah. And so, man, I was just thinking. And, and then seeing the trauma uh, or the just the the demeanor of this little kid and then having that conversation with, with you know, our kids, yeah. you know. Uh, hey, let's you know let him kind of know what was going on because you know it's his teammate. He's got to yeah. pick him up and stuff. And then you know he he uh, I say well you know just don't ask any questions, but you know don't ignore it. Yeah. And yeah, you know, he looked up at me. He said, "Hey, he, he, he talking about being the kid being sad. I say if he's sad or if he's you know cries for no reason, don't make fun of him. Like he's got a lot going on." And he goes, "Yeah, like I'd be sad if you died." And I was like, "Fuck." You know, I mean, yeah. that's the impact that, you know, that, uh, you know, taking your own life or, you know, yeah. it, just something freak happening can, yeah. can do, you know. And and when you're when you're in that state, you don't really think of that, you yeah. know, because you think nobody cares about you. Nobody loves you or anything. Like that. But I mean, there's people that will absolutely love you. And I'll be honest, man, like I'm living my greatest life the, every year, it's like it's getting better, better. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's bad shit that happens, yeah. but it's like on the other side of that. I mean, it's just fucking mountains and rainbows. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's uh, yeah, it's 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 crazy, man. How but life works. It's honestly like, man, like uh, not to give spoilers away, but like you know what Reservation Dogs is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have, you, have you watched it? Yeah. Or anything? Yeah. yeah. So like that show really does a great job of showing the after effects of suicide mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Are people yeah. like that, that death right. just in general? Right. Um, I mean, they build up to their their friend. Mm-hmm. The whole the whole point of the show right. is like the friend's loss, and then you see it's like generational because mm-hmm. like then they're yeah. like their parents had a loss, the same mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, Mr. Pink was my favorite. Oh, really? In Reservation Dogs. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Reservoir <laughs> Dogs. Ha ha. Yeah. I took me for a second. I was nah. like, man, Jimmy was in it. <laughs> I was like, I haven't finished season three. I was like, man, is he coming up? <laughs> my, yeah. <laughs> I know. Like when they killed that. The cop? Yeah, absolutely. Look how they dealt with death. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we just find out the spoil the, the ending of the show is just them crossing over with it. Oh, dude. That, we need to start writing some shit. Yep. That'll work. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, you know, that's the thing is uh um, you know, like I said, a lot of us have gone through a lot of trauma, yeah. you know, and everything else. And, you know, we look at some of these people that haven't gone through trauma and it you know 
even if they have it, like my wife, my wife is like, we compare our lives together and it's like, she had it made, you know, yeah. family there. Like the worst thing that's ever happened to my wife is that her parent got, parents got divorced when she was 12 years old. That's it. I mean, no sexual abuse, no, no none of that stuff happens. But, you know, st- yeah, like, I mean, you know, you just go down the list yeah. and it's like, fuck, this dude's screwed up, yeah. you know? But it's like, that's still somebody's highest level of trauma is still yeah. their highest level of trauma. Yeah. And it doesn't, like, one, you know, once do- they hit that echelon, it's yeah. still your yeah. highest level it's of trauma. It's not a competition. It, yeah, but it's like, holy cow, you yeah. know? I mean... There's there's just so much of it going. On. I wish people would be a lot kinder to everybody, yeah. you know. And I need to do that a lot too, because I'm kind of an asshole yeah. sometimes, you know. But anyways, I lash out sometimes when I try. I mean, it comes out in little doses, but I'm trying mm-hmm. to do better. Oh man, my problem is I just I, I can't keep my fucking mouth shut when people are being idiots. You that, know what I mean? That's, that's my, hard my part. Yeah. problem. It is just God dang. That's my been like so uh-huh. like. Post the my second divorce, and mm-hmm. I went through therapy, and you know, got mm-hmm. myself back together and stuff. Um, I don't really have any tolerance for bullies mm-hmm. or anybody that yeah. just kind of like will mm-hmm. just throw their weight around. Right, I'll immediately shut them down. Mm-hmm. Like, I just don't have that enemy anymore. Yeah. Um, maybe, whether it just be people my, my my first wife or something like that, just yeah. no drama and stuff right. like that. Um, just that bullying behavior. Just mm-hmm. I mean, no. Nope, yeah. Just want to deal with it. Well, I know I look like a bully and sound like the kid <laughs> that beat up everybody on the school bus or something. But I mean, I was n- never a bully. Uh, like I got bullied by my stepdad yeah. all the time, and uh, and and my mom. You know, uh, not bullying, but I mean, it was that mental yeah. attacking. You know, that yeah. type of thing, and the shit beat out of me all the time. Yeah. Um, so, like when I was, I would bully the bullies i mean honestly and then the older i got the better i could fight the more i would just and i mean those are the guys that i was assholes to you know and 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 girls too i mean especially those ones like oh my god like uh, that shit because i mean i was white trash dirt poor you know lived in the city but yet i went to union public schools and i mean so you had these kids like me that were on free lunches reduced lunches and yeah. you know only got school clothes when it was their birthday thank god mine's two days before school started there you go, you know? looking out so yeah, yeah. Um, parents planned that there you go well, hey, well, well it wasn't a plan, plan you, you, no my shit was not planned <laughs> at all we'll get into that later you but, look like uh, the guy to be against planned parenthood no, no, no. <laughs> I sound like I'm going to get... The only reason why I'm against Planned Parenthood is because, like, my mama the told... Too small to no, out. my mama told me, like, no. if abortion was legal, you'd be dead. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's like, holy shit. My, the favorite thing I ever heard was my guest on my very first episode, my, be, my one of my uh, best friends, AJ, uh, his mom went to fight with him one time and so said, uh, like, you know what? I should have swallowed you. Uh-huh. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, yep. Yeah. Well, you should have. Yeah. yeah. you still been fat, though. <laughs> 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 Not like... Uh, so you say I was, you know, planned and, and stuff like that. Like I found out two years ago. That's how I start uh, the three, whatever it was, three years ago, something like that. But that's how I got my start in comedy was the, the this major trauma that I went through later on in life. Like um, I, my step, my oldest stepson, his dad's adopted. So and he's he's a wonderfully gifted kid. His mind's just amazing. He's got a photographic memory and. Uh, he is with that being, you know, with his dad being adopted, he wanted to know where his roots came from. So yeah. he started researching, got into genealogy and all this stuff. I mean, this kid's 13 years old. And when he was 10, he was making family trees for like his friends. Damn. I'm, I mean, it's, it's kind of goofy, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, so he, he wanted to take it, you know, one of those 23 and me's to find his stuff and, you know, to support him. Hell, I was like, yeah, let's take 23 and me and blah, 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 blah. Well, I was sitting in line at Arby's and my results come back and I pop it open and turns out like it says who your father is at the top. It wasn't my real dad. Yeah. And so it like, it said this guy named uh, John Valento and I was like, what the fuck? So, I mean, what an experience at Arby's. Oh, I know, right? At the drive thru. I mean, we have the, the meats. meats. Yeah. yeah, except for the kind that you get to meet your real fucking yeah, dad. We have the you DNA know? test results. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> not so, like, I, I mean, you know, I grew up my whole, and, and then I, as I go through it, like, everything that I was brought up on was a lie. Like, yeah. I grew up, you know, believing I was a, 
eighth or sixteenth Native American. Turns out I'm a quarter Italian. Oh, I thought you were saying because you're obviously a quarter French dip. No, oh, oh. yeah, by God. <laughs> I did take French class in high school, but no, it turns out I'm a quarter Italian, which explains a lot with my temper and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And my undying love for the Sopranos. But, <laughs> God damn. I, you know how many times I jerked off to Meadow Soprano? <laughs> I ain't kidding you, about Not them. enough. I mean, That's what your I mean, yesterday, be. yesterday, <laughs> like that woman is just a knockout. I forget her real name. <laughs> it's a good thing I don't know her because she's on my list right there, <laughs> my hall pass list. I promise you. <laughs> Ugh. I like those girls. So much. I love how we went from like you know death and little league to fucking coming. Oh <laughs> yeah, right I away. Mean, you've you've heard my comedy. I've heard. Like, oh, I mean it's yeah yeah. I'll, I've heard your comedy. My still my favorite oh. joke that I've ever made for you is like when you get really excited, your voice gets a little bit higher. Oh yeah, and I say you sound like Foghorn Lake uh -huh. mixed with Cartman. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> no, yeah. Now why the fuck? Yeah, yeah. that is it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah why the fuck do they call it yeah oh i know what you mean man like, i always like it's like the opening riff for like kyle's mom was a big fat bitch yeah i love that song because my mom was a great big old bitch <laughs> and a whore yeah obviously yeah uh -huh. i mean well, well we get back to comedy and mm -hmm. we talked about like the situation or the the trauma that we all have mm -hmm. it's like when you encounter a comic that's in the scene that doesn't have trauma you're like mm -hmm. How the fuck did you get here? Yeah, well, they're a clean comic. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're, they're booked at churches <laughs> yeah, and shit. Right. You know what I mean? They are a clean comic. Like, I don't find that. Like, I know. Uh, dude, I know that every, like, every comedian has their place and everything yeah. like that. And everybody needs something to laugh yeah. at. It's a carnival, you know? That's the great thing about comics. You know, yeah. you got your you got your elephants, you got your clowns, lions. Yeah. It's something for everybody. Somebody's somebody's mm -hmm. ultimate goal was to be the new Jim Gaffigan. Right. Uh, yeah. Which is not bad. Jim no. Gaffigan is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or Brian Regan. Like, yeah, I've never Brian. heard Brian Regan yeah. cuss, and, but his facials are amazing. Yeah. And uh, I love facials. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're amazing. Yeah, they are. Uh, no, but, like, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. What was that? You got a soundboard over there, too? Yeah, yeah. God damn. Just for you, too. Oh. No, 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 just for you. I mean, I have a little, I have a few buttons. Right. My favorite, my favorite button of all. I'm about to go down to Taco Bell and give me a blast. Mm-hmm. That's just, I mean, I have to have mm. the queued up. Damn it, Bobby. Ball. I can do a little bit of voice acting, uh -huh. not much. I mean, I can do a good Mickey. Dude, I can, I can do an amazing Golem. Dude, from Lord of the Rings. Okay, let's hear it. My precious. That's damn good. That is so my and I don't know what the fuck he says, but like I haven't <laughs> seen that in forever. But I can do a great Gollum boys. <laughs> oh, I, like, all I'm thinking right now is Gollum and a Make America oh, Great Again. No, <laughs> check this shit out. So I started a bit like when I first started, one of my favorite bits that I would do on stage was I was like, yeah, so I searched the dark web and stuff, yeah. and I found uh, Gollum from the Lord of the Rings, the, the other parts that he tried out for. <laughs> Turns out some bitch tried out for uh, uh, Silence of the Lambs. Oh, shit. Yeah, and then I was like, it rubs the lotion on its skin. Oh, that's the house again. He's like, Precious. Oh, so Damn. like that was my favorite bit to do, and it was because I got to voice act. Yeah, take me a little. Go ahead, set. man. I love voice uh, acting. I love fucking with people and just like uh, uh, drive throughs mm -hmm. is my favorite thing. Uh -huh. Just go up there, with Mickey Mouse. Like, oh boy. <laughs> well, that dude, that ha -ha was uh, fucking po on point. Yeah, but you know, my voice is so unique. I mean, I it, people think I'm fucking with them anyways when I'm yeah. talking. So yeah, I mean. Hey, uh, it, it, it makes you stand out though, uh, especially, which is funny because I'm in Oklahoma. Like you have the, the accent a, per, a person that's not from the South mm -hmm. thinks that we have. Well, okay, so here's the deal. Here's why I got such an accent. Um, I went to college. I was a high school wrestler and a Division One wrestler. Yeah. Well, I ended up getting a full ride scholarship to college in North Carolina. Yeah, horseback. Um, yeah, by God. <laughs> uh, so anyway, and so a lot of my. It's like a mixed accent there, and yeah. I have no idea why. It wasn't like I was there my whole life or anything, but it's just it's that mixture of that that Carolina. And I, the first week I got there, I went to a Hardee's that was on campus, or and they because they didn't have Carl's Jr. Yeah, I went to Hardee's there, and I was sitting in the drive through and ordered something. And this lady, she that was on there. She goes, "Oh my God, where are you from, baby? You, you, I love your voice. Yeah, you talk weird." 
And I was like, bitch, you suck. You got, you got to be kidding me. Or I'm from yeah. you sound like you have a low IQ. <laughs> And I know I sound like I got one, but yeah. and I probably do. But. Well, like I mean, not to sound uh, uh, like people with an accent like yours or like the southern accent. I, I mm-hmm. feel like we get treated the same way, or you would get treated the same way as someone that like English is not their first language, mm-hmm. and they could speak it fluent English. But you know, like right. uh, I had a relative that was you know from Mexico, right. And, you know, just seeing, like, how people would talk to her like she's demeaning or mm-hmm. dumb because, right. they, like, they do it slower. That, that typical, like, how are you today oh, yeah. kind of thing. No, seriously. Like, I went to – I just got back from California. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I performed a bunch of places there. But anyways, after one of these shows, one of the other comics, was like, you know, comes up and, hey, man, you're really good. You know, that type yeah. of stuff. Uh, I was like, oh, so I wanted to mix in with the scene. I was like, you know, is there any – they had a uh, website that had all the the mics and stuff like that. And yeah. I ended up performing at Flappers and all nice. that. So I'll tell you about that later. Let me finish this story. But uh, anyway, so like they said, yeah, there's this hottest mic in town is uh, is this one place. I don't yeah. remember what the name was. And so I was like, oh, cool. You know, and they go, just tell them you're there. So it's. We were staying at the um. We we stayed at two places. We stayed at one place by the beach for three days, and then for three more days we stayed at the Omni in downtown. Okay. And so downtown LA is like downtown Tulsa liberal on steroids, you know. Yeah. And I'm I love liberal people. Fuck, yeah. I'm more liberal than any. Uh, like I, compared to my voice, I'm pretty damn liberal. Yeah. And uh. But anyways, you're I liberal. Up, your voice is closeted. Oh, absolutely. My <laughs> voice is alt right. Yeah, you know, I mean, shit. And uh, <laughs> as then you go by that, hey, boy, we ain't right. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, but it, I go up on stage, and it was I got a shitty spot at like two thirty a.m. Oh shit! And I mean, there was fifteen people in the crowd and about twenty comics in the back. You know, and they're all hanging out, and I mean, some of those people in the crowd. Like half the crowd just as soon, hey, how y'all doing? You know, that type of thing. But they just shut the fuck down. Yeah. And I mean, like, it was a good set. And I even said on stage, I was like, fucking Tulsa, they think this shit's hilarious. Yeah. You know, just because they prejudged but, it because of the accent. But I mean, there was half of the, you know, half of the room was dying laughing. Yeah. But the other half was like, fuck this guy. You know, yeah. he voted for Trump, yeah. you know? And, uh, well, it's like, fuck, man. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, even like, Tom Zagura and Bert talk about it like on their podcast mm-hmm. stuff. Like they loved going to like the more uh the conservative states because that mm-hmm. was the first to open up and actually come back to comedy and like right. being ready to like be laugh. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, uh I'm as liberal as you can come, you know. Mm-hmm. I suck cock left and left and right. <laughs> right. But god damn. And in the center. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a free for all. Oh my god. Uh as long as they're tested. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean kinda. Uh, <laughs> Just yeah. give me a wink. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a nod. <laughs> this would be like George Michael in that bathroom right. all over again. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's not like Pee Wee Herman where he gets arrested in the fucking nudie. Dude, Rest in peace, Paul Rubens. Dude, dude. They ruined that dude's career and he didn't dude. even jerk off. Speaking of which, I just found out uh, there's a a sex shop in Tulsa that's got a movie theater in it. I didn't know that shit. I didn't know they still oh existed God. because I was like, it's 2023. You can just go on Pornhub. Like, it's Dude, like, like I go, uh, you know, it, and I just made a bit about it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I literally have done it on stage twice and trying to figure out all the, the tags and everything else. But uh, literally, I, it was like, uh, oh, boy, I was in there, you know, buying some toys. And uh, the old, old boy in there, he was like, I was like, man, this place, you fucking got everything. And I love acting like I'm a bumpkin, yeah. you know what I mean, when people don't know me. Yeah. Um, because just to see their reaction yep. from it, you know? And uh, <laughs> yeah. anyways, <laughs> this dude goes, oh, you think that's sweet? You ought to see our movie theater. And I go, you guys got a movie theater? And he was like, well, we got three of them. I was like, what? And he goes, he goes, yeah, uh, 20 bucks, you have unlimited access. I go, wait, settle down, Turbo. Yeah. I ain't, that, that's bullshit. $20, like, I got Pornhub on my yeah, phone, yeah. like, and that's free. And uh, he was like, he was like, okay, well, 10, you can check out one of the theaters. <laughs> so I go in there and I slap down $10 and, uh, yeah, I told you to slap down $10. And I go in and I walk in 
I open the door, and then there's another door that you have to go into. There's always and another soon, door. And as soon as I opened that other door, it was like, Oh, it was like pervert paradise, you know, except it sounded a little bit more like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I mean, I ain't kidding you. I was like, this so is. That's what's inside the briefcase. Oh, the whole my picture. God. That, that's, uh, that, <laughs> dude, I'm not kidding you. I was like, holy shit. So I ran back out, slapped down another $10 and said, fuck, I'm, I don't want to check them all out. <laughs> God damn, they're like Pokemon. I want to see them all. All I can think of right now is you say movie theater, and I'm like, man, give Go and Broken Arrow five years. Dude, I no, tell you what, man. I'm just saying, he has go of all shows. He uh-huh. has jack of all shows. Mm-hmm. Put him go in jack there. off of all jack, shows. Jack and go. Mm-hmm. Jack and uh, go. Jack they, and go's right there. They, I, and here's the deal. Like, it was so funny. You could tell the guys that were in there that, like, kind of like me. Uh, you know, I was in there, and I was yeah. watching that uh, dirty movie, and I pulled my little whacker out, you know, and gave her a little slap around. And some little boy walked in. Hell, I was still pretend like I was trying to find a fucking remote. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, shit. No, no, I was just looking for the remote. <laughs> <laughs> so, shit. Oh, I'm not kidding Hello, you, man. No, my God, man. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. No, he's like, what are you doing? You know, that type of thing, and... Mm-hmm. You were like, that is the best 37 seconds I ever had. No shit. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what. I've jacked off in a lot of public areas, but never in a movie theater. <laughs> I ain't kidding you. Especially one like that. And it wasn't even really a movie theater. They just had like TVs up in it there. Was like a you car, know? It was like an abandoned car wash. No, yeah, that's pretty much what it was. Like, they, had like, they had movie theater seats, yeah. but you know, not the reclining ones, because they need to upgrade yeah. a little bit, them leather. I bet those are easier to clean. I'm than just saying, they need ones. to make it all out of tile or make it like, you know, uh-huh. like a quick trip bathroom, uh-huh. so uh-huh. make it easy cleanup. Uh-huh. I do like, but now, since we're kind of talking about I love your setup in here, man. man. Like, you got more toys than a fucking sex shop. It's I ain't true. kidding you. You do. And not all of them. It don't uh, ass. <laughs> that's why <laughs> yes. I thought that fucking Red Ranger had been up there. I saw a little brown stain on yeah, him. Yeah, that's a brown ranger. Uh-huh. I know you got your legs up in the air, and you're like, Tyrannosaurus. There is a cowboy around here somewhere. <laughs> No, it's a mastodon. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he would shove it up your ass and put a little hat on top of your pecker, huh? Yo, yee-haw, moo-moo, buckaroo. <laughs> Don't king shame me. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Hell, I might be into it if they weren't so curvatured. <laughs> You're more into the Transformers. I need something a little bit more smooth. You're more into the Transformers, aren't you? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah. yeah, Optimus Prime. I'm just waiting for... I'm surprised there hasn't been some like dildo company or something like that that makes like a transformer one that's like a knockoff just to have fun Dude, with it. That would be amazing. Like you hit a button and it turns into like a, a vibrator. Well, yeah, a vibrator, but like Bumblebee can be a little rabbit. Yeah, but it's a <laughs> it's a light, you know, or something like it's a night st- it's a lamp you put on your light nightstand. You just hit a button and it's <laughs> Starscream turns into a pair of like fuzzy handcuffs. Yeah, damn. <laughs> like, wouldn't that be some shit? That's probably what we're going to next. Is like everything in your household can you hit a button and you just, turns into a dick. I mean, or, I'm just or I mean, a cooter. We gotta be close to it. We're like, you know, we gotta be having like a USB like Z soon. Oh just, yeah, exactly. Just a pussy, <laughs> Boom. or an asshole. Yeah. I mean, I'm not just, I'm not just disparaging. Yeah. I did show you my Transformer video uh, a second ago. Yeah, like, I yeah. thought you were about to segue to some porn. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, this is I when should... I did Transformer porn. No, I, I did show you my Transformer video earlier. That was, that was pretty cool. Universal, yeah. I was hanging out with the, what was the guy's name again? Not Megatron. Opt- Megatron, yeah. yeah, the bad dude. Yeah. yeah. He was cool, man. He's an asshole, though. Yeah. He's a bully. Yeah, he's I one... wanted to kick him in his... It's Whatever converters. I, yeah, I guess it was a muffler. I don't know what the fuck he is. <laughs> His exhaust pipe. Yeah, that's know. what it was. <laughs> His Cadillac. Give a foot stuck in there. God <laughs> oh, damn. His transmission. I that's don't know. funny. Stick shift. I don't know. We're just throwing out. No, oh, it don't matter. Yeah. Like I said, this is ADHD podcasting right here. The funniest part about Transformers growing up is like. <laughs> You remember what Megatron used to be? Like his his very original toy? Like what his t- he transformed into? Nah. A fucking replica pistol. Really? Like a uh uh-huh. like one with a scope and like an actual arm attachment. Like it was a um let me find it. Yeah. Like please. it got canceled please so dude. hard. Mm-hmm. Uh not by country people, shit. It's all them liberals. <laughs> well, it was the moms. Mm. But then that, they still, I don't understand that, because they still show that you'll shoot your eye out movie every fucking Christmas. So this was the original toy. Look what it turns into. Holy shit. Do you see how good that is? Yeah, that's amazing. Like, 
You're gonna have to pop that up on a yeah, pile, like, on a video. Yeah, like, like that is impressive, dude, that's incredible. So like, and then also like, because Transformers started, and it was like three different toy lines from Japan. Mm -hmm. The Hasbro was like, just bring this shit over here and mix them all together. Right. And so like, the good guys were the cars, and mm -hmm. the bad guys were the guns and the jets mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So Megatron, big old big guy, mm -hmm. turns into a little handheld pistol, and then the other guys hold him and shoot him. Oh, okay. And it was the stupidest thing if you really think about it. Like, why is a big guy turning into a fucking pistol? Right. But the toy, it was basically because we had all these different mm -hmm. toys. So speaking of like toy stores, yeah. um, I, you've seen the Barbie movie? Yeah. You know how like, uh, I, I thought it was actually pretty fucking damn good. Fantastic. Yeah, it was a really good movie. Great Margaret, writing. Dude, Margaret Robbie's. <sighs> yeah. She's knockout. And fucking, uh, dude, I love Ryan Gosling. It's yeah. Oh yeah, he was great. Enough. Um, we, like, our first hotel we stayed at, the Mattel place was right behind it. Nice. So we fucking went in there and saw this stuff. I tell you what, there's some weird fucking people in California. There I'm are. not kidding. Holy shit. Well, I was walking through that, some bitch, and this guy, like, he was at the Hot Wheels section. <laughs> Let me take a drink You're real good. quick. You're good. I mean, I was about to say, you say there's weird people in California. It's like, have uh, you met Trash? Well, yeah, yeah but, but I mean, then, then it makes sense because Trash used to be in California. I was like, oh, it makes go. sense. Love but, anyways. Like, I was walking through there, and I, it was in the Hot Wheels section, and this son of a bitch turns and looks at me, and got about three teeth in his head, <laughs> and well, doesn't really speak English, and he goes, look, Bubba, Chewbacca, Chewbacca. It was Chewbacca on a fucking, like, <laughs> driving, and it was had a big head. You know, I'd say, oh, my God. <laughs> like, what, what about my face makes me look like I want to have a conversation with you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like, did you see any of the, so was it like just a guy dressed up in Chewbacca or? No, what? it was like, it was a, a, it was a Hot Wheel car with Chewbacca driving it. Oh. It was just a big headed Chewbacca. Oh. But the guy like had it on it and he was like, look, Bubba, Chewbacca, oh. Chewbacca. <laughs> I was like, God damn. I, and he smelled like he hadn't had a shower. He, he smelled, smelled like Chewbacca. Like Chewbacca. <laughs> mm hmm. Uh, like. Man, I don't even want to imagine Chewbacca's dick. Uh, like, it's got to be sweaty as fuck. Is, uh, do you think it's hairy? Or do you it's got to be. Not, when, not during his teen years, though, right? I mean, even the baby ones are pretty... I mean, well, but, I mean, he probably jerked off a bunch and rubbed it off. That's how they know. Uh, either it's that or, it, it yeah, either that or it's got, like, dingleberry type stuff. <laughs> he that comes in all. and mom's like... <laughs> and he's like, tree sap or equivalent of. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the episode title. Tree sap or equivalent of. <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> My God. <laughs> oh, hell. Chewbacca jerking off. I didn't think we'd get to that topic. You what, never do you, what do you think, Sting? <laughs> Sting will talk to you if you hit him. I will. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to hit him. I, he he's he's one, a good Christian he man. Was, he was one of my idols growing up. Um, You'll love this then. Um, okay. Sting's a good Christian man. He's very like PG. He like, doesn't like mm -hmm. to do anything like sexual or like yeah. on his character. Hit him a couple of times to see if those sound effects sound off. Like punch him. Hit him a couple times. Like, like, he'll usually go, ugh. Who's uh, Winter? That ain't happening. Try harder. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's what my wife tells me. Bring it on. That's what she tells me, too. Try harder. Try harder. You can pin him. You can put him down on his back and, like, pin him. And, like, Dude, that's yeah. incredible. That's I a wonderful fucking toy. Yeah, my kid has fun all the time with oh, that thing. Oh, shit. She, like, she's seven now, and she fucking mm -hmm. plays with that all the time. Wrestling yeah. buddies? I, they brought those back. That's AEW. Like, he's yeah. still wrestling. Yeah. Like, AEW is my shit now. I, I know you're not into pro wrestling mm -hmm. much anymore. Or not into right. it. Like, like, I love AEW. It's a great company. Mm -hmm. Dude, I grew up with, like, the Stone Cold. I yeah. mean, like, that was... I mean, I wasn't really a rock fan. He yeah. kind of crested when, after I stopped watching yeah. it. Like, in high school, I didn't really watch it. But then, like, as I got older and I kind of had kids, like, every Monday night, we'd watch Raw. Yeah. And, I mean, we just sit there. Their, their mama worked, you know, 12-hour shifts. Yeah. She'd work... Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So Monday was our day. We get yeah. pizza and everything else. It's like Daddy's cooking a night, yeah. you know. And uh, we'd we'd watch Raw, man, and that was our thing. And I, you know, it was it was a lot of fun. You know, you know, what that's I, actually how I became a pro wrestler. I took my daughter, my my daughters, but yeah. my oldest daughter was there, and uh, I took her to a uh, a local show. And the dude made an announcement. If there's anybody out in the stands who would like to become a pro wrestler, we have a wrestling school. And she looks at me and she goes, Dad, you could do that. And so, like, I kept it from her. I went through all the training and everything. And, uh, and then uh, told her we were going to go to a wrestling show, you know, like three months later yeah. when I debuted. Because... Oh, it takes a while to learn how to do it, but yeah. since I was a you know high school and college wrestler and stuff, like I, I was an athlete. You already had so a background. I, I had, well, it wasn't just a background that, but I was I was an athlete, you know. So I could, 
I can see my, I can tell my body to do something in like my mind's eye. Yeah, you, you know, have, you have more I mean, control. I see, yeah. yeah. So you know, having that training, and I mean, I just progressed through it, and I became really good at it. Like, I mean, you know how quick witted I am and yeah. shit, and and I was a heel, so they they'd that say makes bad sense. shit. That makes sense. They'd yeah. say bad shit, and yeah, I'd you know come back. Yeah. Oh, is this your, you know, that type of stuff. And oh man, it was it was great. But anyways, I debuted in front of my daughter, and it's you know how you have those pictures that were taken and you have like your top five pictures of all time yeah well i've got a picture and it's i'm sitting there i'm in the ring and holding up a hand like that holding on to the rope and my daughter is in the fore or the and in, in the foreground you know with her back to the camera booing me uh, nice. oh dude it's literally like it's it's probably my it's it's definitely in my top five for sure. That's a cool. Like, that's a cool. Oh image, man, it, it really was. And like I said, I took her to that show and like, hey, we're gonna go to the wrestling show, and I'll be back in a minute, you know. And uh, I went and put on my tights and everything else, and uh, and she was like, "Where's dad?" And then music hits, and I walk out. And that's fuck, fucking I'm cool. wrestling. So yeah, it was it was pretty cool, and and. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun, man. I, man, I had a blast. That's doing a moment, it. man. Oh, it was, it was, and you know, uh, yeah, we always go and hang out with the wrestlers afterwards, and they'd come to the back and all that stuff. And, yeah, you know, I end up touring around a bunch for it, not just staying local. I mean, yeah. I went out and did some other stuff with it, and it, it was a lot of fun, man. Like I said, I I wish I'd have done that right out of right out of college. Um, you know, but I did MMA right out of college, but, and yeah. that was a, that was a blast in itself too. Well, but, I mean, like I, I love wrestling and I know people like, oh, mm-hmm. shit on it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, but like, man, I've went and watched Hamilton, mm-hmm. like a Broadway show right. and I've watched mm-hmm. SmackDown Raw and I've been to oh, NXT yeah. and stuff live. Mm-hmm. They're very similar. Oh, absolutely. Like yeah. it's just a live stage mm-hmm. show, but with a yeah. lot of acrobatics and a lot of theatrics and a lot of athleticism. Oh yeah. Um, and dude, like it's well done, and like I can appreciate the athleticism and the talent behind it. And yeah. for, for somebody, the thing that I appreciate about that is like they're stuntmen. Yeah, you know, and but stuntmen when they're in a movie, how often do they do stunts? Like couple, I don't know, a couple, couple times. Yeah, yeah, a couple times. Yeah. These guys are doing this shit every night. Uh, you know, six yeah. nights a week. You know, and and for. Them to have that type of control on their bodies to be able to do some of the things they do without getting hurt, yeah, is incredible. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Like, I mean, I was, uh, I'm, I'm very athletic. Like, I'm not trying to brag, no. but, but fuck, it's a podcast. You know, I got to talk about me. You're the most athletic uh, person that's been here. <laughs> but uh, like, you know, my finisher was a lion salt. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, and I mean, I've got an awesome photo of me uh, doing a lion salt. I'm back over uh, but i'm looking down at my opponent like you know i mean it's, for the audience that doesn't know wrestling that's a backflip off the middle rope yeah and uh like i've hit you know oh, i'm getting chills god dang i loved it <laughs> talking about uh, it with talking jericho about shit you. that i was doing it uh you got Ch- chris jericho figures behind you. Uh, dude he is one of that is why and so that i called it i called my move the lion pepper because it's just a little bit more spicier yeah. nice. than lion salt nice and uh anyway uh and also, uh, you know, I was able, I could do shooting star presses and that type of thing. Damn. And, yeah. Um, Take that, so, Brock Lesnar. My God. Uh, <laughs> Fall on your fucking neck. Yeah. And actually, one time in a show, <laughs> I went to go and do one, and the rope rolled. Because oh. it rolled like that, and so I lost my footing. Yeah. And I got up uh, like that, and I mean, I just literally, like, fell. And yeah. uh, it was... It was Into but, a Botchamania? You know uh, what Botchamania is? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Botchamania. Oh, I love Botchamania. Uh-huh. I, my goal is to eventually get a clip made and uh, get something on get up there, Matthew, and like get it on Botchamania. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Because I want to make some memes and stuff like that. Like, I, mm-hmm. I do some of the wrestling. You've seen yeah. my posts. Yeah. Like, I just want to get something on there because like, I love Botchamania. Oh, yeah. oh it's great. great. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun thing. Well, I mean, I, I talk about, I've talked on this podcast before, is like, I am heavily influenced by pro wrestling whenever I started doing the stand up mm-hmm. again right. in this podcast. And I wanted to treat, treat this the way an independent pro wrestler treats Mm -hmm. their career. Right. And a lot of times, I've said it before, they do it like for a hot dog and a handshake, just Mm -hmm. doing these different places, just trying to get the reps in. Uh, Opportunity to build your audience, man. I mean, that's what it is. And And then you never know when you're going to get that opportunity for like the the show of your dreams or whatever. So you take, it it doesn't matter what it is, you just take all of it. 
Because you're honing your craft. It's about making those connections. Exactly. You're honing your craft. Yeah. You're getting better. I mean, you know, let's be honest. Like, I mean, this podcast isn't like Joe Rogan. No. But you take every single opportunity you can. Because yeah. what if one of these days you're you're on a podcast like that? Yeah. You know? You, you don't want it to be your first fucking podcast. No. You've heard the guys on there that, yeah. you know... I don't know if you're a Joe Rogan fan. I fucking am. I don't know if you can tell by my, the way I talk, but I'm a Joe Rogan fan. Uh, and, uh, you know, you don't you don't want it to be your yeah. first one, and you fucking suck. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to be ready for the biggest platform yep. that's out there. Yeah, and that's why like, I tell people all the time is, like, it's not about, I mean, yes, luck plays a heavy, heavy role in this shit. Yeah. But you can build your own luck by doing mm-hmm. the work. Yes. Being yeah. fucking ready, uh-huh. doing the reps, yeah. making the connections, mm-hmm. and just being ready for an opportunity. Because you're going to get fucking lucky one of these yeah. days. I mean, hell, <clears throat> even... Nobody dies a virgin, so you get lucky yeah. every now and then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the thing is is yeah, it you well, just like, gotta get ready for it. Well, like case in point, like um two weeks ago, mm-hmm. I didn't have a show or anything like that, and then Roscoe was like, Hey, do you want to do this some time at Baby Roos? Mm-hmm. He's like, I can't pay anything, just do oh, some free yeah. time. I was like, sure, I'll go out there and do mm-hmm. Baby Roos. Drove out there, and you know, from here to right. Broken Arrow, it's an hour and a half. Yeah. So like hour-ish. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, like, I'm going out there, and I'd had a shitty day. Mm-hmm. So, I was just sitting there, and I'm like sitting here, and I'm kind of dogging on myself. I'm like, man, haven't really written a lot of new stuff. Uh-huh. Haven't really performed in a while besides hosting stuff. Right. Open mic stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And then I was like, am I an idiot for driving this long for, like, no money at all? And Did you then have I, a set of your life? Had a pretty decent set. There you go, Pretty Bubba. damn good set. There you go, Bubba. And then the bartender, and I, uh-huh. so, like, the first four minutes, I was pretty, like, mm-hmm. I wasn't woken up yet. Right. At four minutes in, I could tell that I woke the bar up. Right. And everybody started getting into it. I got mm-hmm. loosened up, yeah. and I ended up doing about 12 minutes. Nice. Um, then the bartender and her friend came over. We're like, that was mm-hmm. so funny. What are you doing, like, so, this such and such date in November? Right. We want to book you for the birthday show, and we're going to pay right. you this much, stuff like that. And just because I did that, they uh-huh. booked me for that. Dude, that's awesome. And it was just yeah. one of those things where, like, I was just doubting myself, uh-huh. like, should I be doing this shit right. or anything? But I'm going to do it because it's for the, ne- the uh-huh. network. I need to get this rep in. It, who, how often do you get a free mm-hmm. 10 minutes? Right. Oh, yeah, anyway. for sure. That, that's funny you say that because uh, uh, Spencer booked a Claremore show. Yeah. And I saw the people on it, and it was. Michael Patton, Nicole Miller, yeah. and then, you know, uh, CR was on it and stuff like that. Yeah. And, like, my comedy isn't like their comedy at yeah. all. You know what I mean? Like, Nicole, I've never heard her say anything cross. Yeah. Michael, he's, you know, he is a clean comic. Yeah. He, I mean, he gets a little edgy, um, but, I mean, his edgy it's is PG-13. like... It's PG-13. Yes, exactly. I mean, he makes innuendos or something yeah great, all of them great comics in their own and yeah. i literally call like sent spencer a message was like dude are is this a like age appropriate show he was like no dude you just be you this is why i put you on it yeah and i mean i'll be honest like i i was i was freaking scared yeah. of the, what was gonna be there i was super nervous i was thinking about it a lot and like i even reached out to spencer a couple more times and I get there, and him and his wife both said, "Hey, don't worry about this, man. We put you here for a reason. Like, yeah, you know, we want that style of comedy here. Yeah, and, you know, we don't want everybody to be like that. Yeah, but we want that style of comedy. I literally go up there and fucking kill. And I mean, you know how when you have those shows and so like." I don't think Michael really likes me that much. He respects me, yeah. but I don't think he likes my con or whatever. You yeah. know, like he came up and said, "Hey, man, great job." Yeah. You know, gave me a fist bump, and to me that meant the world. Yeah. You know, some uh, like, and then Nicole comes up and's like, "Oh my god," you know that yeah. that type of thing. And Cr comes up to me and said one of the nicest compliments I've ever gotten in comedy. You know, from a you know local comic, and I respect him a lot. He's yeah. a great comic. Cr, yeah, his yeah. episode's coming out in about three weeks. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, but yeah, and you know, he said, "Man, you had him the whole time," and I was like, "Fuck yes!" And then literally two weeks later, I only did fifteen there. Yeah, and you know, uh, two weeks later, I was headlining for a show in Arkansas, and Katie Styles booked it, and you know we. Took some people up there, and uh, Katie uh, featured, you know, for me, and because she she had already headlined like two times before this, yeah. So she was like, "Hey, I want you to headline," and I'm like, "God dang, I don't I don't know if I'm ready for that," you know. And and she goes, "Dixon, like, you got it, dude. I, yeah. I, I'll put you there." Yeah. And I heard Spencer back in my head, yeah. and it's like, "Fuck, Bubby, you got it." And yeah. I go up there and do forty five. 
getting fucking murdered. Nice. Fucking That's murdered. That's what I like to hear. That's I what mean, I like to hear. I mean, not killed. Fucking murdered. I mean, people coming up, buying me shots and everything else. We did so good. And Katie killed, too. Yeah. I mean, she absolutely killed. Yeah, our, styles, our styles are a lot. Katie styles. And, yeah. and my style is a lot of I will say, though, like shout out to Katie. Like mm -hmm. Every time I've ever talked about booking a gig or anything like uh -huh. that, Every time I'm like, hey, who should we get? Brian Dixon. Brian Dixon. She always backs you up. She's always oh, good. Put name dropping you. Uh -huh. That woman is a, is a delight. I love. Oh her. yeah, she's she's probably my best friend in comedy. I mean, to be honest, like, I mean, I I reach out to her just to BS with her, you yeah. know. And uh, you know, I've got a lot of good friends that I've made from comedy. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Roscoe. I mean, uh, Spencer. You. Yeah. I mean. A lot of people, and I know they're going to be mad that I'm forgetting Missy. Like, yeah. I mean, it's just There's I would so have never guys. met Missy if it wasn't for comedy, and yeah. we're great friends now, you yeah. know. And uh, com polar opposites too, and uh, like it's just it's those people right there that it just wow because you know? at the end of the day we all get something mm -hmm. out of entertaining yeah and there's some kind of drug that, right. that releases in us and we're oh, like yeah. we need this so then go ahead oh sorry i, no, I cut you off no, i gotta fine. start looking at so we did so good in that show yeah uh they booked us six weeks later now granted we had probably 45 in the crowd yeah you know ten dollars ahead everything like that they book us six weeks later we go back six weeks later. I headline again. Uh, Katie's opening for me. There's 117 through the door. We didn't advertise nothing. Damn. Nothing. It was all word of mouth. Like these people, they were talking about it in the bar, everything. 117. They had to turn people away, put them in the very back of the room in a, like a different room just so they could be in there. And uh, so, like, they told us, you know, how many they had. Yeah. And the next, you know, like two days later when we get back and I was like, hey, you know, just out of curiosity, I would like to let other promoters know. And if I'm getting into your business, don't don't worry about it. You don't have to tell me. But what do you typically run on a bar night, like on a typical Saturday night? Yeah. And what'd you run that night? She said, typically we run 1,200. We ran 33 that night. Damn. Yeah. And it was like, holy shit. And she was like, yeah, we want you guys back. And I was like, settled. I did another 30 and yeah. like all mostly brand new material. Yeah. And, um, it was like, mama, you're going to have to wait a little bit. I got to write some new shit, yeah. you know? And so I basically got like an hour, hour and five, hour and 10 of good material, nice. you know? And, uh, like it's, Dude, it's so much fun now. Yeah. And I remember coming back from Arkansas, that first one, and it was right after all that, and it was like, I I, I even, I, I drove us all out there, and on the way back, I was like, guys, I feel like a real comic tonight, you know, like an absolute real comic, yeah. not just some open micer, not just that, like a real fucking comic, and yeah. then that one, and, you know, there's just been so much incredible things have happened with this comedy career here recently like in uh, uh i don't i i don't share this to many people yeah. because it just happened because it's like like not very like it's almost unbelievable but most of my stories are unbelievable <laughs> that's why um, i had you on here man so like i we're in california yeah um we went out there uh for a vacation but i've was going to perform pretty much every night. Yeah. And um, I ended up getting booked on Flappers. And on a, on a Thursday night, there was an incredible headliner there. And I don't want to name drop him, but he used to have a night show. Um, and he, headline. anyways, I'm telling my stuff. They gave me seven minutes as like a tryout. Um, I'm, uh, <laughs> after the show, and it was one of those shows where they made you check your cell phone. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes, like put yeah, it in yeah. that. Obviously, this guy's getting ready to go tour. He doesn't want all this shit out. And like I said, very known person. Yeah. This son of a bitch comes up to me, finds me, and has like so such kind words for me. And, you know, giving me advice. And he was like, oh, he was like, hey, man, you know, you, you might want to work on, you know, you're stepping on some laughs a little bit. Tell him. And I said, yeah, Bubba, I like, 
man, I only had seven minutes. And yeah. like, I, I, like I knew I had to get to it. I had a whole lot more. And cause I timed myself every yeah. time so I can kind of see where I'm at. And I had three minutes of material where I had to shrink into two. Yeah. And instead of making the adjustment and just getting to, yeah. cause I'm a storyteller. It yeah. doesn't all make sense if I don't tell the whole bit. And, um, like he was like, Oh yeah, I, I, I totally forget about those days where he goes, now I can talk as long as I want. It yeah. doesn't matter. Like I forget those days. I was like, I didn't want to run the light. Anything off like camera. That. Was it Kodak? Yeah. Huh? Was it no, Kodak? no, it's off camera. Uh, oh, uh, it was really? Yeah. Awesome. Dude. Swear yeah. I'll be trimmed. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This is a whole edited podcast. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, anything fine. that gets out there, I'll be trimmed. Yeah. No problem. Um, but yeah, he, uh, and then, uh, he, at the end, you know, like I said, we had about a five minute conversation. He looked, at, he shook my hand. He says, "I'm gonna remember your name," and I was like, "Fuck, dude!" Like, That's what you want, fr- yeah. Like from that, I'm you, chills, man. I'm not kidding you. Yeah. Like chills. Look at that shit. Hey, girl, or boy, or boy, girl, or girl, boy, or whatever you identify as today. This is unloading meat. This episode is not brought to you by your favorite razor for your nodo parts. You know, I bet the boys on grinder that hook up with me, boy, wish it was. Because it's just hairy down there. Like, down there just looks like Seth Rogen from that movie about the pickle. You know what I'm talking about? Like, a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. So, if you want to help my love life, or simply wish for me to stop talking about my pubic hair, then message your favorite razor company. Like Manscaped. And tell them to sponsor Unloading Meat. Now back to the show. I don't want to get rich. Uh-huh. I'm not looking to get fucking famous. Yeah. I'm not looking to turn to the next Joe Rogan. Uh-huh. I mean, I do like Joe yeah, Rogan. Oh, yeah. Um, but if I can pay my bills, get a few sponsors, uh-huh. and take care of my kids, right. that's all I want. Oh, yeah. And, you know, when I launched my comedy this year, you know, I had my divorces and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Paid off my house. Paid mm-hmm. off my car. Dude, I'm so proud of you. And That's incredible. Great out. job, dude. Yeah. Great job. That and is, like, I I'm this. super proud of you. Like, I'm 100% debt free besides my house. Yeah. And that's the way I, I pay for cash for yeah. everything. Like, dude, I, I do things different. I don't want to be a slave to the lender. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, like, my thing and, is, like, I worked, like, not that there's anything against it or anything like that. Right. I'm not trying to, like, no, shame I'm not either. Like but that. that's just all yeah. my choice. You yeah. Know? I mean, and your choice. So, but like, for, like, for better part of 13 years or so, mm-hmm. I tried to do like the white picket fence, right. like work the nine to five. Mm-hmm. And like, I busted my ass mm-hmm. through cell phones. I was in cell phones for like right. AT&T, T-Mobile, US Sailor, all that yeah. stuff. And then the final thing was like, I was a district manager and I was working mm-hmm. between Texas, Louisiana and Oklahoma and driving mm-hmm. that weekly. Yeah. That's a hell of a trip. Oh, like, yeah. I had seven stores between three states mm-hmm. and they wanted me to hit them every week. Right. Fucking impossible, and you're yeah. raising two kids and a yeah. wife and all that stuff. Well, dude, I mean, my yeah. the reason why I do it is because like, I, I, I mean- my first divorce, yeah. I had a nice house, you know, yeah. everything like that. Wife left me. Work, they cut my hours down. I wasn't salary at the time. Yeah. Uh, they cut my hours. I mean, I went from making to six figures down to, like, working 40, yeah. you know, because I was working double time on Sunday, 12 hours. Shit, some of my checks were 80-something hours, yeah. you know, and, I mean, making more money than I ever seen. Yeah. And then it was like my whole life crumbled, yeah. and, you know, they were. I had a, a Chevy Avalanche and everything else, and this nice house will help. My house ended up getting foreclosed on, and I was I was so, you know, bound and determined to prove to her like yeah. I could do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I couldn't see, you know, I couldn't see in front of me. Yeah. And it was. I mean, it was the most stressful time of my life. Yeah. And I mean, from that point on, I was like, never again. I mean. I kept, I had my truck still, yeah. uh, but it was like fuck. I moved in with a buddy, tried to rent out the house uh, to get to pay for it. Yeah. The people that I had in there, they paid a month's worth of rent and then stiffed me on six months. And it was like fuck. So I'm trying to you know pay for all this, pay for, the, and it just wasn't working, man. Yeah. I ended up getting my house foreclosed on, and I was like, never again. Yeah. Like I do not want to be in that situation. Like I felt like the biggest bum and the biggest loser yeah. of all time because just because I had to run a bad luck, you yeah. know, the oil market went down. Yeah, you know, and I was like, "Fuck!" So, yeah, no, I totally understand. You know, when shit hits you in the mouth, if you keep doing the same thing, you're gonna get punched in the mouth. You yeah. got to dodge. Yeah, you know, and uh, but yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But uh, so after that flat, after that flapper show, yeah, I. Our rental car was a Polestar 2. You know what those are? No. It's an electric car. Okay. And so they have a Polestar, which is like the lower grade one, and then a Polestar 2. 
And this Polestar 2, I'm not kidding you, man. It has a function on there where you can figure out how many Gs you're pulling. You floor it. And I don't know if you've ever driven an electric yeah. car, but, like, as soon as you touch that pedal, I mean, it <clears> goes. <throat> like, it's no hesitation. You just, wow. You know, it was like, you know, yeah. the Jetsons. You know, however yeah. that goes. Anyways. Like this car, you could pull 1.2 G's Holy when you shit. floor it. Like seriously, my kids were in the back seat. Not this time, but like I was weaving in, in <laughs> and out of traffic. Yeah, that. well, I, yeah, I let I left them some bitches in the parking lot they, while I, daddy went to tell jokes. You know, like I said, they get my B game. Fuck them. Fuck them kids. It's no. like their heads and wrote. Like, uh, what's that death proof? Whenever their heads, are like, yeah. Back. <laughs> no, but like, I mean, and it was. I mean, I was driving like I was Dale Earnhardt. You know, and uh, but anyways, I come and. I needed to charge it, and uh, I found one of those super station things at UCLA. Yeah. Um, so I pulled in there into a little parking garage, charged it, and, like, it gave me the opportunity to just, like, analyze and, like, process everything that just happened. Yeah. Like, that whirlwind of emotions you have when you're on stage sometimes and, like, doing it above your head. Like, oh, my God, it gave me that time. And then... I was going go to the highway or get, get done charging and get back get on the highway and I mean I'm you know I have no idea where I'm at. Yeah. I, I know I'm on the 405 and it's like holy I got the windows down like and it's dark and then I come to this like I come to this uh place where it goes it looks like a it drops down. It's like a bridge. Yeah. You know, but it's not. It's in the fucking mountains. And you can see the silhouettes of the mountains in the moonlight, just sheer cliffs. And I mean, it's like just basically straight down at like a 30 degree angle. And I'm like, fuck it. I hit that pole star. I'm going 111 down oh, to 405. Shit. And I ain't even shitting you, Bubba. It was like, it was one of the craziest things. And I was like, I am sitting here just chasing my dream. Yeah. You know, I mean, and it, it was, you know, it was late. There was no cars on the road. Yeah. It was super late. I didn't give a shit. Hell, I was a little tipsy. No, yeah. I'm not kidding. I wasn't <laughs> tipsy. Um, I was fucking drunk. <laughs> nah. <laughs> and, Spoiler alert. Nah, I, I mean, I was, I was just, you know, just driving. I was like, fuck, I'm living my dream. And yeah. then it reminded me of a Rogan podcast where he's talking about driving his Porsche down, you know, all the twists and the turns. And the day before, we literally drove from uh, L.A. where we were at, like by LAX. Uh, from the beach, like, uh, what's that famous? Santa Monica. We were right by Santa Monica yeah. is where we were staying. And we drove all the way up to, uh, I mean, we drove an hour along the beach. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just got to see some of the coolest stuff. Uh, God, what was that TV show that with the kids in high school? That's where... God damn it. It was on MTV. Sweet Valley High? No, it was no. on MTV, and it was just the, Real the World? name of, no, it was the name of the town was it. Anyway. The OC. No. Uh, anyway, short story long. This was out in the bougie part. Okay. You know, the really high dollar one. Beverly yeah. Hills, that type. I think it was Beverly Hills. No, it wasn't Beverly Hills. Not 210. It was Hell something else. No. It was like, like that. Yeah. I don't fucking know. Anyways. Yeah. So, edit that part out spoiler alert she was 16 she got pregnant no um, it was it was uh <laughs> so we went up to like we drove and i mean it was just the whole day was incredible man this is my first time in california like i've never seen anything like that the waves were incredible i was body surfing like i mean i am literally chasing my dreams you know and my whole family's with me they're supportive of it and it was like i and a pole star. Never even heard. Yeah. Only pole star I ever heard of before we worked at a teddy bar. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was like, like this I is that was the, the great, of Grand no, Auto. <laughs> this is like the greatest car I've ever driven. And I, like, I'm a fucking redneck. Yeah. Like, I like trucks. I drive a Jeep, you yeah. know. And this car, I swear to God. Oh, I know you I, drive a Jeep. Yeah. My uh, neighbors know you drive a Jeep. It's got a fucking system in it. Pulls up it? and it's like, my Maria. My Maria. <laughs> Oh my God, that's a great fucking song, man. But the funny part was, is I was coming here to your place, yeah. and one of the streets is. Yeah. There's a boulevard, yeah. I think, isn't it? Yeah, well, don't give away it so I don't get robbed. Oh, no, no. I mean, but anyway, like, you have to, you have to yeah. make them more turns and shit but anyways i was driving down i was like oh this is like california and uh, except it ain't like california no. it's a different type of i tell you what i saw one lady on the side of the, uh, by her house over there and and i mean she 
It was a lot like California then because, I mean, she had her teeth hanging out and cut, her, her, she had, you know, looked homeless. Yeah. Had about three teeth in her head. And, you know, they barely cover up in California. And I, I promise, I think she had a nipple hanging out. But they were a lot lower than than, they, than the Geographic. ones I saw. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were down by her belly button. You know what I mean? Damn. No, but I still South look. Titties. Well, I mean, I pulled over and jerked off. I mean, why not? I jerk off in public. No, yeah. I don't. I but, mean, they get old enough, and then you know, instead of putting our dicks up in our fucking waistbands, they put their tits down in there. By, by God, <laughs> yeah, yeah hold a nipple the in waistbands there. Waistbands go up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> tighten up that belt one more notch. Oh no, but I mean, seriously, it was like wow, like that that whole California experience, and it was just um, it was like you know when I was in fifth grade. Um, and don't hate on me for this because he was a good guy at the time. Okay, like um, I did a Bill Cosby himself <laughs> set. You know, I swear to God, I did, I did. And um, did you have oh. Jello pudding? <laughs> no, no, it was the you know the are you familiar with Bill Cosby himself? Like yeah. that bit? Yeah. Or, I mean that show. Well, there was uh, where he talked about drug, alcohol, drug, and alcohol, and then the different types of drugs. And he was like, he talked about cocaine, and he was like, you know, it just makes you laugh for no reason. And he was like, like you see guys, and he's like, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah, I went over to the Burger King and. I, it was like a three minute set a bit yeah. of that. Well, anyways, I tried out uh, for it and did that bit for the tryout. And the teacher, the teacher was like, "Well, yeah, I was in fifth grade. I didn't really know what cocaine was. You know <laughs> what I mean? But I did it in front of her, in front of the whole class. And uh, fifth grade, you yeah, doing a Bill Cosby uh, bit yeah, about yeah. cocaine? About school. cocaine? And she was like, "Well, you can't do that." And I mean, but if you find a different way to do it, just you can't talk about drugs. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't even know what cocaine was drug, I think. Yeah. And so, anyways, like I was sit, I did peer tutoring when I was in fifth grade. I'd go to like third grade class and hang out with them and, you know, do all that stuff. Um, one day I had, uh, I was, I was joking around. I was being a ham, and you know those hundred percent stars. Like you did a good job. You get yeah. the old star. Well, I put all them some bitches all over my face, and uh, somebody's like, of "What's course. what's wrong with you?" As yeah. one of the kids said, and I go, "I got teacheritis," <laughs> and like I turn, I was like, "Wait a minute, maybe I could do that bit, but yeah. say that I have teacheritis, and use that." And literally, like. I did that on stage, and like adults who knew what it was, like came up to me afterwards and was like, "That was awesome." Yeah, and I didn't even know like yeah. what I was doing there, but like I've had this dream ever since I was in fifth grade, and you know, I mean, even as a young kid, because yeah. no matter how bad you're feeling, no matter how low you are, you can watch a comedy set if yep. they're good, and I mean, it just takes you away from it, man, yep. and like God. I, I hate to get all like you know yeah. emotional stuff. I mean, not emotional, but you know sensitive. But I mean, that's what I want to do. You know, yeah. There's so many bad. There's so much bad shit going on out there. Yeah. So many people like who are going through shit. Man, like, just make them forget about it for Have a little, little levity. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just break it up a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, that's. If I could do that, I and mean, you said, you know, earlier, you know, you don't want to make it big, you don't want to be rich, and yeah. dude, I fucking want it all. Yeah. Like I don't care. I I want it all, and um, you know, there's a lot of it, like I I want to make it big, like real big. Yeah. Well, my um, thing is, I want to be comfortable. I want to mm -hmm. be where I don't have to worry about the bills or anything like mm -hmm. anymore, and I just want to keep doing what mm -hmm. I'm doing, what I'm happy with, mm -hmm. which is stand up and podcasting. Yeah. Like, so uh, like, my, my wife is is a sugar mama. Yeah. I mean, very much. Like I make a fantastic living yeah. too. I'm a, a basic, I'm over a plant, and you know my industry. Yeah. And uh, we have four plants, uh, but I'm over one of them. And, you know, I've got a great job, make a good living, but my wife is a sugar mom. She owns a, uh, she owns a, uh, a, a therapy, a speech, physical and occupational therapy clinic here in, in Tulsa. She has two facilities. And I mean, she works one day a week treating patients. Yeah. Um, but you know, a couple days a week, she got to go into the office and like, I want to be her sugar daddy. You yeah. know, I want, I, I want it to where she don't even have to worry about it, you yeah. know? And uh, she don't have to worry about anything now anyways, but yeah. uh, like, God damn, like that, that's, that's, I, I want all of it, yeah. you know? And, and, uh, 
like I said, I, my my son's got aspirations of playing in the majors one day, um, <laughs> which is funny because uh, my he my wife's family is very successful. Yeah, it's everybody in their family is fucking successful. So uh, Thanksgiving's pretty fucking awkward when Dixon shows up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like uh, like seriously, one of them plays. Uh, do you know who Michael? I think his name's Michael Ray. He's a country singer. He sings that Whiskey and Rain song. No, nah, I'm not. Well, okay. Yeah, I'm well, sure. Well, he plays for him. He plays lead guitar for him. Tours all around the world. The Damn. guy had a number one. It's it. Her other cousin won the Stanley fucking Cup like Damn. two years in a row. Yeah, that's I, I drank beer out of the Stanley Cup because of her fucking family. Like, Damn. and I'm not even a hockey fan. I don't even know the fucking rules of offsides or yeah. anything. And I've drank beer out of the Stanley Cup. Like. It, I mean, like, holy shit. But my youngest son, like, he, when we went to go and see the Stanley Cup, like, he had just found a love for baseball. And uh, he, uh, we're, I'm telling him about the history of it because it's one of the greatest trophies. Being an athlete, you know about the Stanley Cup. Yeah. It's one of the greatest trophies in the history. More history, more lineage, more prestige in that trophy than anything. And I'm telling him about it. And he looks up at me dead in the eye and he goes, do they have, do they have this in baseball? And I said, well, yeah, they do. It's not Stanley Cup, but it's a different trophy. And I said, hey, you also get rings too, and they're super big. Yeah. And you know, showed him a picture, and later on, I showed him a picture of one. But he goes, I want to win one of these in baseball. And I'm like, and then like, I thought back to whenever I was five years or fifth grade. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, this dude's just found his dream. Yeah. You know? And it just. It's, ah, dude, it's kind of crazy that life comes full circle, yeah. you know? And that's and, what I'm trying to learn. And you don't about. even realize it until later on whenever you're thinking. You're putting shit all back together, yep. you know? It's like, picking all the dogs like, shit, Yeah, yep. it, it's just, it's super incredible, man. And, like, uh, I, I, you know, here's the deal. I, I, I may not ever make it. I may not ever. But, my God, I'm going to fucking try. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't become as successful in high school wrestling, yeah. like I ended up getting a full ride scholarship to college. Like that's the only way I was going to school because I was that poor. Yeah, and like I worked every single day at that. I mean, five hours a day. Like I'd get up in the morning, go run nine miles, um, pull weight, everything. On my lunch breaks, I was in the wrestling. Um, lunch at school yeah. went to the wrestling room or the locker room hung out in there so i didn't have to be around food because i was pulling so much weight i mean i was the first one in there and the last one to leave i would stay for the kids practices afterwards help them and all that stuff because i realized once you teach something it slows everything down and you really you know understand you, you <laughs> hit the moves you know you 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 Per, you perfect them because you're having to tell somebody each individual step and your mind's never really broke it down that way. And so I'm going to work that fucking hard to do it. Like, yeah. I, I, and like I said, it, I took a lull after, before California kind of, oh man, she ain't, but now like I'm going to fucking do it. I'm re-energized. Bubba. Yeah. And, and so uh, I hope it's going to do good, you know? Well, it's like, it's kind of like, with me and the podcast, like building this and like mm -hmm. building the, the brand and stuff, it was like I told Joe we're cell phones for so long, and mm -hmm. like for, right when COVID happens, whenever mm -hmm. I, got, I lost my job there, right, and then like I had nothing to show for yeah. it, and it's like I was like I said it before, like at one point I was like Mr. Magenta in town, like uh -huh. I, I dyed my hair pink, I wore pink kicks, right. I was Mr. T-Mobile, I wore uh -huh. everything, right. painted that room, built a fucking hardwood floor, put uh -huh. that in that building, and then when I got let go, I had nothing to show for it, right. And I was like, man, like something happened to me where it's like I can't do that again. Mm -hmm. To where like I want to build my own thing. And yes, like, exactly. I, I started building my own company, built mm -hmm. the, the thing, yeah. and like I'm gonna live or die by this. Mm -hmm. And like you know, like I said, I worked my ass off to where mm -hmm. the house is paid for, the cars paid yep. off, and where this year it's like if I keep my bills down low, mm -hmm. and you know, DoorDash and right. do freelance work at the time, right. I can make this work. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, I was a small business owner as well uh, yeah. before I ended up selling my company, yeah. and then uh, you know, and then. Uh, taking a job with that yeah. and the, really the main reason why i took this job i mean it pays great yeah but we were tired of paying 800 dollars a month for insurance yeah you know so i was like fuck go there and get great insurance and yeah. cheap and then you know i mean it's not only are we making that good income but we're also saving 800 dollars a month yeah. you know or well 600 yeah. i mean what yeah whatever it is 600 so yeah dude and you know it's it's just 
gosh, like, love it. Yeah. Like, it's... Well, and it allows me, like, like this now, just the more freedom. Because also, like, with my mm. schedule with my kids, like, with my custody and stuff like that, yeah. it's, like, it's damn near impossible for me to get a full-time job right, right. now. Like, I, I have my kids, like, every Monday, Tuesday, take them to school Wednesday. Right. And then I have them every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, awesome. dude, you got a fantastic schedule. Yeah. I know it's every other weekend. Uh, every other weekend. Yeah. I get okay. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I know it's a great it's schedule, a, yeah. but it's it's hard to find a job around that. Right. So, because like, and then also like, I'm sure you have you've got kids. Mm-hmm. You have kids. Um, yeah. They live in Florida though. So, oh, okay. well, like, yeah. Now, I'm a I'm an absentee oh. father. <laughs> well, with Oklahoma schools now uh-huh. since COVID, it's like. At least once a month, they're just mm-hmm. going to use one of their winter days mm-hmm. and just give a Friday off. And you, yeah. have, to do, you have to basically take right. off work or whatever and have your kid in, mm-hmm. do in, uh, in home school. Mm. And you have to do it through a Chromebook. And right. so, like, they just expect all the parents to take off on one Friday a month yeah. Yeah. and just, you know, do mm-hmm. that. And, you know, I need to mute my phone. Ah, oh, don't Thank worry. You. We can edit that. Thank you, Isaiah Blue. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck Isaiah. Bl- no, he's a great kid, <laughs> he's man. A good kid. I, I, I really enjoy Isaiah. He's, I love he's, him, man. Yeah, uh, I did his podcast too. Yeah. And uh, hey, he <laughs> for the the picture or the announcement or yeah. whatever, he was like, "Hey, man, you know, I thought it'd be funny if you know, like, because." Uh, I cu- he was like, if you came out of the bathroom, you know, and like, do not go in there. I was like, he's too young to know like the Ace Ventura reference from yeah. it. So I was like, fuck that. So anyways, I was like, yeah, yeah, no problem, man. And uh, I was like, so he thought I was going to be sitting on the toilet or something. I get into this fucking shower. It's got a glass door on it. Start fucking naked. And there's like a little towel rack, you yeah. know, that covered up my tallywhacker. And uh and anyways, he opens the door. He's like, my guest for this week, Brian Dixon. I'm standing there going, <laughs> it's dark fucking naked. And I mean, the whole place erupted. Like there was 14, uh, there, not 14, there's four <laughs> people. 14 <laughs> inches is what I meant to 14 say. 14 inches? 14 inches. What, no, it was a there's cold four, shower. There, no, there was, yeah, by God. <laughs> yeah. All right, that, that got yeah. a joke that i used to, they, these two old boys were i was pissing at the chili bowl one time <laughs> and, you know the, the sprint car races at that's, the another, that's another catch for it that's yeah. another, put it on thumbnail pissing at the chili pissing bowl. at the chili bowl and this old boy to my right and this, they were buddies and they kind of one of them looks over at his buddy on the other side of me and he goes he goes oh man this water's cold and this guy goes yeah it's deep too you know everybody's heard that yeah, shit yeah well i'm staring dead straight and i go boys I got a scar on the head of my penis as proof there's alligators in the sewers. And they looked at me and started dying. This old boy laughed so hard he farted. You know what I mean? And I, like, I never heard anything like that. And I said, well, fuck it. Well, like, he caught him mid piss. He was releasing. I know. He was just straining, I guess. Hell, I don't know. It's like but, when you're fucking and a fart slips out. My God. But no, that Isaiah, he's a fun kid, man. I really like him, and, and he's getting so much better. Yeah. Um, well, and it's like, I love. I appreciate people that are doing the work. Right. They're putting in the work. Oh, Isaiah yeah. is one of them. Mm-hmm. And there's people that are like doing the reps. They're really mm-hmm. pushing to get better at their craft. Yeah. They're not taking this as just a hobby. Right. Right. Um, not, I mean, there's people that do that and do great. I'm yeah, not saying absolutely. Wrong. I'm not. Oh, yeah. I'm not disparaging. I'm and saying, there's people that do that and are shitty too. Yeah. And they like, well, like, how come you're getting shows and I'm yep. not? It's because I'm fucking funny. Yeah. You know. Uh, you're funny and doing the work. You're being good at the yeah. right time, and you're not being traditionally an asshole to people. Well, yeah. I am. But well, I mean, like they can't. I used to be an MMA fighter, dude. They can't really a, do there's shit. There's asshole, about but there's it. also business asshole. Right. Where you're like, you're not burning bridges when uh-huh. you go to a fucking building. Yeah, I kind burn, of. Thing. I burned a couple of them, <laughs> but <laughs> not the, not to the owner. Like yeah. just these con- some well, of the comments. One thing you brought up mm-hmm. when you're talking about your Arkansas show that I really wanted to hit back up on is the same thing whenever I was hosting. Uh, whenever I did the Go Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, my biggest thing is always asking the promoter, hey, did you make money? Mm-hmm. How much you make tonight? Like, yeah. did you guys do a good? Like, Because yeah. in my mind, that tells me how good I am, mm-hmm. is if they made a profit and they mm-hmm. were actually don't regret right. having us there. Yeah. Oh, and, dude, when I did the go show, yeah. the, my last one that I headlined, dude, they lost money. Oh, it was bad. Like, the, there was the Jinx Union game that night. There was, I mean, there's so many other reasons yeah. that it could have been, you know. Yeah. And I didn't draw at all. Like, I had 20 something people tell me that they were going to go. Yeah. And I mean, literally, like, hey, I mean, friends, you yeah. know, like people that I like. Yeah. And none of them showed up. Yeah. And I mean, I was so fucking, dead. I apologize, Gene. He went to pay me. I said, no, man, you keep it. And he goes, absolutely not. Yeah. Like, and I was like, I am embarrassed, man. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Like, but at the same time, like I didn't put the work in to promote it the way that I should have. I didn't hang flyers. I didn't. I didn't do. I did a Facebook event. That's it. Yeah. And 
it, like I didn't make a promo video. I didn't put it on my TikTok, anything like that. And I was like, fuck. So, you know, I had a big head and I yeah. got humbled real quick. Um, but you know, that's a, that's a learning experience. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, the, I like hearing that though. That's a great take to hear mm-hmm. though, from as you learn from it and you realize oh, absolutely. What, what, where you're like, where you're, uh, like, opportunities uh-huh. are. like don't get me wrong yeah. i have a big gigantic ego oh sure i do well, I, we all I, have like, to have one kind of to get the, on the stage i have a gigantic ego but you know, i you, think you, if get your dick out of the way uh, you well, ego, ego out your well way. i mean you know but it i i am probably one of the most like self-reflecting people you've ever seen like I am all about, like, I got it tattooed on my arm right here. It says, relentless pursuit of perfection, knowing you'll never achieve perfection, but you're bound to run into excellence along the way. Oh, man, that's deep. Like, I mean, I am, like, every day, like, I go and reflect, okay, what can I do better? Like, I record all my sets, whether it's audio or video or something like that. I watch them back. I look at my jokes what did i miss yeah i look at my stage presence i mean everything yeah because you're one of the few people i've noticed that like that records everything mm-hmm. yeah, like, and then, then yeah. it's a big prop to you like mm-hmm. like a lot yeah. of people don't and it's a big thing like you know you've helped me record my stuff dude yeah. like it's like you got to know how you're doing mm-hmm. you, you don't know yeah. how your body language is how you're, absolutely like, you never know like, yeah you, you and and you can also f- see when you're comfortable in a bit too if you video yeah. it like if you're uncomfortable in a bit like you when it's new like yeah. you kind of know when it's ready by your body language yeah. you know what i mean yeah or if you watch your body language while you're doing it or watch how you're, you're stumbling through it kind of like i am explaining this um you can really see what part you need to work on or hone in yeah you know uh and and that's there's so much stuff and the crowd reacts to your body language more look at brian regan yeah i mean like he isn't funny until he starts doing his facial expressions and that type of thing. And then he's fucking hilarious. Like, uh, you know, all that shit, you know, that son of a bitch has recorded Uh, himself and done it in front of the mirror and everything. Like, what if I do this? What if I do this here? You know? Yeah. And, and that's what we have to do as comedians. You know, you've got to sharpen it every day. And whenever I first started, one of the things I tried to, I was, Oh, I, I literally have said this to people, well, I don't want to go up on stage and tell the same, you know, tell people the same jokes every time. Like I've got to have new shit all the time. Fuck that. Yeah. Like I you mean, get the reps in the Oh word. my god, you've got to do your bits until if there was a school shooting that came through or an Amber Alert came through on your phone, like, and you could, oh my god, that's all, and then get right back into where you were at. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, that was probably a bad analogy, no, 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 no. but I mean, like the, the worst a thing. Um, I mean, <laughs> shit, I got a gun pulled on me at a comedy show. I had to disarm the some bitch. Yeah, you told me about that. One. Oh yeah. my god. So yeah, that's why I say it. Like yeah. that shit happens. You know? Yeah. After a show, some dude was gonna commit i can finally talk about it yeah. because the trial got over and everything but the dude like, i did nothing wrong you know what i mean like wasn't making fun of the guy wasn't anything like yeah. i did no crowd work during the set yeah. and um after the not show, that excuses it no no yeah. but after the but i mean like literally every time yeah. i tell a story everybody's like well what'd you do i'm yeah. like nothing you don't understand like let me finish the story yeah um uh, so like did nothing and uh so the guy ends up uh i found out later that two months prior to this he uh had you know two thousand dollars in his wallet and and, uh goes somewhere and gets mugged and beaten up real bad by three guys and then they pull out his wallet find out there's so much there's a lot of money and i don't know how he got the two grand whatever he might have won the casino or something but anyways they go to shoot him ex- they go to execute him basically like they shoot him. the guy sets up and they shoot him and shoot him through the arm right here so like they were trying to kill him yeah and then they end up running away um so anyways he's in this bar and this is two months he uh he there's this guy sitting here and they're hammered i mean this guy and this other dude yeah like the dude on the left actually i wasn't drinking that night yeah. because it was i was it was an angela teague show and uh wasn't drinking that night because i wanted to be clear-headed yeah. on stage and uh so i had nothing to drink uh 
walk off stage, get done. It was my first time headlining. And uh, walk off stage and pretty much shows over. The guy's like, hey, let me buy you a shot. And I'm like, man, I got to go to the bathroom real quick. I'll come right back and yeah. blah, blah. He was like, no, let's do it right fucking now. The, this big, tall dude. And not the one that pulled the gun. And uh, I said, all right. So I go and take a shot. And then we, whatever it was, and then I go to the bathroom real quick. And as I'm, I'm in the bathroom, there's a knock on the door, and it's the bartender. And she was like, "Brian, I need your help." Uh, Tim threw up on the bar, which was, you know, the guy who bought me a shot. Yeah. And like I said, this son bitch had been drinking since it was open. You yeah. know what I mean? It was bound to happen. And, oh yeah, and so he throws up all over the bar. And she's like, I can't do throw up. I can't. Can you help me? Can you help me? So I was like, yeah, go and get a mop bucket and everything. I'll go back in there and, you know, so I walk in there. And it's some bitch, like, literally all over the bar. He's scooping it off. Oh, going, I'm oh. sorry. This has never happened before. I've never done it before. And I, I mean, literally, like, right now, I go and get him a trash room. I'm like, all right, pile it off in here. I mean, he's got shit all over him. This guy sitting over here has got barf splatter all over him. You know what I mean? And I'm like, hey, it's all right. Don't worry about it. You know, shit happens. I'm not making fun of the guy, anything yeah. like that. Um, I'm just trying to be kind and help because in my eyes, these guys are fans, yeah. you know? Um, and he was like, hey, don't, this isn't, this guy right here goes, this isn't your show. This is the bartender, like, like blah, blah, blah. Why? I was like, no, Brit, Brit, I don't want to say her name. Yeah. Um, he was like, the no. Bartender, yeah. yeah, the bartender, yeah. Uh, it's her show. This is her bar. Like, yeah. what are you doing? I was like, no, she asked me for help. And, like, she can't handle this stuff. So she asked me for help. I'm just here helping, man. It's, uh, every, I promise. And he was, like, he was like, and then he says, like, you look like the guy who shot me. And he turns, and I'm in the middle. Like, I'm not, these guys were seated pretty much. So I'm kind of, like, behind them yeah. trying to help. And he goes, you look like the guy that shot that. No, sorry. You look like the guy, the guy that jumped me is what he said. And um, he turns and I thought he was going to, like, get a better view. And he has a revolver in his hand. And he literally sticks it, like, right in my face. And, like, I ducked down and went like that. And, um, like, I mean, I can't do it just it's instant, instinctively, yeah. But, I mean, like, I mean, that's a wrestling move. Yeah. You know, like, how he just, boom, he's shooting, du you're ducking and shooting it under. It's like that bass and, root and, like, uh, I mean, it was yeah. literally, like, instant. As soon as video. I realized it. And, you know, bang, I, it up, bang, like, it up, bang, yeah. bang, 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 no, I'm not. <laughs> bang, 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 don't, don't you ever do this. I, I know that this may sound like, uh, this may sound like, oh, it doesn't, but like it, everything slowed down. Like it was just microseconds that I was seeing as yeah. seconds. And like, like I literally saw the trigger coming back. Like he didn't have it cocked on the revolver, but I saw the trigger coming back. And like, as I'm doing it and I get him against the bar and he's laying out on the bar with a gun like this and I'm standing over. And I'm like, dude, stop, like, stop. I've got a wife and a family. He goes, I don't fucking care. And he's got this gun and he's trying to shoot me while I'm on top of him. I mean, and I'm seeing it go back. I finally disarm him. Um, I disarm him and the gun goes across the bar. Well, guess who ends up picking it up? The fucking guy that threw up on the bar oh, picks the son bitch up. He's like, it's okay, I got it. And I'm like, boy, and this dude's like six foot seven, two, like three hundred and something pounds, like a big guy. And I'm like, dude, Tim, like, put the gun down. No, it's okay, I got it, I got it. And I'm like, dude, I end up tackling this son of a bitch. And like, just give me the gun. Like, I'm not gonna get shot on accident when yeah. I just disarmed a dude. And so I got the gun, and I mean, like, I walk, like, I have the gun. I walk out to the smoke area, and there's two comics out there. And when this happened, there was four uh, comics in the room. Yeah. Or, or there was four people in the room, and uh, like a guy and his wife were there. Alex uh, Horner. Yes, he was there, and his wife, and um, like they end up running off and everything. Cops get called. I go out there. Boyd was there, and he was out in the smoke hole. He wasn't inside. Yeah. He was out in the smoke hole with uh, his buddy. And uh, 
like I just I'm holding this gun and I mean I I took the bullets out and yeah. everything and um and he was like and I mean I'm just in shock yeah and you know it was uh it was it was crazy dude I didn't leave the house for three months like I didn't leave the house for three months and um like it was crazy uh like I held it together right there. I called my wife and said, Hey, something major happened. I have to stay here for a little while. I won't yeah. be home for a little bit. I'll tell you everything when I get there. And I'm holding it I'm holding it together. I literally walk in and just sob. Like my wife grabs me. Oh man, I'm tearing up. Well yeah, just like, the emotional release. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, just tearing up thinking about it. And uh my my wife like grabs me, just embraces me. And I mean, I'm crying hard. You know what I mean? Like the who, like sobbing. And, uh, dude, it was, uh, shit. Uh, me. No, I know. I ain't worried about it. Shit. Yeah. I don't give a damn. Um, but like, uh, whenever, uh, whenever, uh, I would, like, I couldn't sleep for a while because every time I'd sleep, I had this dream that, like, that I was, like, living a simulation. Like, everything that happened during the day, would be would okay so i was laying in a hospital bed and like it was like a, a video or a camera was on me i was laying in a hospital bed and then like <laughs> wayne's world you know and but everything that happened to me like with everything bandaged up and he like had my face my face was all bandaged like he shot me in the face um and um but i would have a dream while i was in the hospital bed that everything that happened to me during the day i was dreaming like and it would be like everything like from peeing like i mean and it would be the shit that happened that day it was just it was like i was living in a simulation i mean i wake up you know just yeah. panicked and like oh, you know like it just making sure it wasn't real yeah. and they it it's was, almost like your subconscious was like searching for, through oh, that day to look yeah. for more threats well it turns out um this guy you know he had significant trauma that happened to him yeah. um but it turns out that uh, he was going to commit a mass shooting there. And it wasn't it like the cops went and searched his house and uh, found a manifesto in there. And like he weighed, he had a five shot revolver and he waited till there's four people in there and him. Damn. Crazy, huh? Fucking crazy. Like crazy. And, uh, like I said, the, the court stuff just all, all just recently got done. And I mean, it was, it was wild, dude. Uh, it was convoluted and all this other stuff, a lot of uh, stuff, but that's, that's basically what happened. And I mean, it was, it was, it was crazy. And I, I didn't, that's, I didn't do comedy at all for like three months, yeah. you know? And what the crazy part was is uh, I know what the significance was, was the first time I got paid for comedy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't my first headline. It was the first time I got paid for comedy. Yeah. And it was $20. And, you know, who gives a shit? Yeah. And it was an Angela Teague show. I literally went around with that $20 and had everybody sign it. This motherfucker signed it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He signed it. Wow. Like his, and then and, and big letters. But, you know, I still got, I'm going to frame it. And, uh, but, dude, it was just, it was crazy. Like, you know. <laughs> you should take it to Walmart buy some ammo. Nah, yeah, yeah my God. <laughs> That'd be the right trash thing to do. Redneck thing. Uh, but like I'm gonna end up framing it. It's it's in my underwear drawer. Uh, whenever I want to stare at it every day. Yeah. When I start my podcast studio, it's gonna be hanging up in the background. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but like like I said, that's just what I'm saying, man. My stories are fucking unbelievable. Well, not only I, that, but you never know what somebody's going through on a normal no, day. Like, no, and I mean I know this guy was going through yeah. significant trauma. He let it eat him. You know, I'm I mean, just talking about even you in general, because oh. like, like um, you had told me this a couple weeks ago when I was doing the Go th Show, mm -hmm. and yeah. like I gave you a ride home. Like, yeah, you, you, yeah. Uber uh, was super expensive. You're like, hey, Uber you was gotta... sixty dollars for yeah. nine miles. Yeah, like there's no way I'm paying that. So I was like, hey man, you take me home. Yeah, I have no problem yeah. with people rides. Yeah. yeah, and so like, you kind of told me a little bit of that, uh -huh. that what was going on during that time on our way uh -huh. back. Because like I love riding with comics, stuff like that. Uh -huh. That's time when we just kind of chat. And that's yeah. honestly why I love this. Uh huh. Because we can have a better conversation, get right. to know each other, be friendly. Uh, yeah. and just so have those cameras going. Yeah, but you know, if anything gets too raw or anything like that, it gets cut. You oh, know what yeah, I mean, yeah. I want I want you I guys to have trust with me. Yeah, 
Um, I never want to betray my guest tr- trust. Oh, yeah. I, I never want somebody to regret coming on here. Right. No, you know that I mean? story yeah. is totally open now. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Use it like I mean, it's just it's just like I joke. It's a hell of a story, man. I, I joke around like you've heard of the Midas touch, right? Yeah. Everything you touch turns to go. I yeah. got the mid ass touch. <laughs> Everything I touch turns to shit. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah, I mean, like I've got so many unbelievable stories, and that's that's the thing is like, I mean. I am living my dream, dude. Yeah. Like, I grew up dirt poor, you know, in a 700-square-foot house, single mom, not knowing who my real daddy was, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, uh, just a, you know, a drunk stepdad. Yeah. Um, you know, mentally, physically abused. Like, when I was 18 years old, I knocked out my stepdad because he tried to grab him by the throat, put him in the hospital, had to call an ambulance and stuff. Just one punch knockout. And, I mean, he was trying to hurt me. Um, but I gr- went from that and, you know, whenever you're a kid, you have dreams of what your life's going to be like, especially when you're going through bad shit. Yeah. Like I could have never have dreamed this shit. Yeah. Like ever, yeah. ever have dreamed this shit, you know, whether I make it or not, like, I, I mean, I'm going to, Yeah. but whether I make it or not, I like, I am living a life that is beyond my dreams. You know what I mean? Like the house that I live in now, the wife that I have, the stepkids that I have. Yeah. Like, I am, it's incredible, dude. Like, and I mean, could it get better? Absolutely, yeah. it could. And it's going to. Yeah. But like, for the most part, the day to day, the overall bird's eye view of it is like, I mean, I sit in my Jeep sometimes and like my first car had no paint on it, it was all primer. Like, and I had to drive that to Broken Arrow High School. I ended up transferring from Union to Broken Arrow to wrestle for them because yeah. they had a great wrestling team. I had no problem. I was the most made fun of kid in school for the vehicle I drove. You know, you got kids driving Porsches and Lexus and Audis and that type of yeah. shit. And I've got this uh, four this Toyota truck. I don't even know what it was, but it had no paint on it. And sometimes the clutch wouldn't work or the starter wouldn't work. So you'd have to go down and jiggle the starter up underneath it. <laughs> like, so you get some bitch to start. Yeah. And they like, now, I mean, I'm driving my dream car, you yeah. know, like it's, it's, oh my God, like it's yeah. more than what I could ever imagine. And I mean, if it, like, seriously, yeah, I don't, I'm getting sappy, but if anybody's yeah. out there and like, you're going through a hard time, like it's going to get better. Well, it's like, like I had, it's going to get better. Just, I've never seen hard work not pay off Yeah, ever ever and sometimes it feels like it's not going to pay off yeah but i promise you just keep fucking grinding and it's yeah. going to yeah you, you gotta like that grinding don't you I, I, God, I, 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 I usually just refer to it as grinder as oh, app. It's, a, it's a free app well, I, mean, yeah, it's I mean you can pay for yeah. you know to be boosted but i mean uh, i'd rather yeah. yeah yeah you won't pay to get boosted uh, don't you uh, by god my boosted <laughs> uh, uh. Fucking grinder. Yeah, well, yeah. Fucking grinder. <laughs> yeah, fucking, fucking grinder. grinder. <laughs> I look like I'm hoagies and grinder. <laughs> Navy beans. Navy beans. beans. Meatball sandwich. sandwich. Slappy trolls. We're gonna get fucking copyrights. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. It's everywhere. There's blood everywhere. There's blood. Why? Why didn't you help me get sponsored by Manscaped? I'm gonna save my bush. I, I I mean I'll I'll fucking waste one of my bits. I talk about how like between us butt bandits and the old people, we keep the glue business in business. <laughs> that is funny. Old people need glue. Pe- oh man. my god! I try, yeah. Uh, what was that? Do you remember like the ESPN uh, announcers they'd have on SNL? That was like for like the women's leagues. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was like they'd have like sponsored by Vagisil and stuff uh-huh. like that. And it was like Jason Sudeikis. I just keep doing mm-hmm. like Vagisil yeah. commercials. Uh-huh. Oh my god, Vagisil. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's funny. Vagisil. I scream. You scream. We all scream for vagina cream. What happened to Saturday Night Live? I mean, seriously, I know it's still running, but it might as well not be. Yeah, like it's, I mean, it's not. I mean, the only thing good about it, which was always good, is the weekend update. I weekend mean, update, the, yeah. dude, those two guys, like, 
I will uh, say also the um, what's it called? Like uh, do not destroy or something like that. It's like the writers. It's like the new version of like the Lone Island. Oh, okay. It's three right young writers that are uh-huh. in the writers' room, and they do like a digital skit every week. Oh, okay. Oh my yeah. fucking god, they are hilarious. Okay. Uh, highly recommend. Okay, watching I'll those. definitely have to. Yeah, because uh, I mean, they're like pre-recorded little skits they mm-hmm. do like in the writers' room, like whether they're trying to come up with a weekend or something like that. Yeah. And they'll usually involve like the, the the guest star of the week coming in, mm-hmm. and they get. They start out, I love bits where they start out like just a normal day and then they just go insane. Yeah. And those are like that. They'll okay. start out calm, like just small, small, and then it'll just go to 11. Uh huh. And they're funny. They're fucking yeah. hilarious. But yeah, you're right. Like, I mean, honestly, Shane Gillis around that time is kind of where I started yeah. noticing the decline a lot. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, that guy rebounded pretty quick. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Fuck. Shane Gillis is a fucking monster. Uh huh. Love that dude. Yeah. Uh, but goddamn, yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I watch it in bits and pieces, but it's not. Destination TV, anything, but uh, I mean, really, nothing's Destination TV anymore. Uh-huh. Man, Brian, thank you for coming. This has been oh, fucking no. fun. Man, I'm so sorry it's taken me this long. We've dude, chatted back and forth. There's just been there's got to be a sequel episode, dude, because there's more to talk about. Oh, uh, dude, they, uh, we talk. I can talk for five. I told you I go all fucking night, but so what I like to tell people is uh-huh. like. Some of them, my best guests, what I like to do is like, you know, I'm going to have repeat guests. So yeah. I'm trying to give everybody at least their one shot oh, their yeah, spotlight yeah. episode. Because like, I want this show to be like a spotlight of a comedian every week. Uh-huh. Here's a comedian for a couple hours. Right. Get to know them if you want to know them. And a uh-huh. lot of times it's their first podcast or sometimes on right. video. So I want to give them the benefit of the doubt and make them look like a hundred fu- or, you know, a uh-huh. thousand bucks. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't say a million bucks uh-huh. on here. I don't got that budget. <laughs> <laughs> make them look like a thousand well, yeah, bucks. I've seen the fucking pool that you're pulling from and ain't none of them looking like a million dollars. <laughs> million pesos. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian. Um, <Right>. uh, <laughs> no, like, I just want to give you guys a spotlight, but what I want to tell about people is like, I want to have guests come back, uh-huh. but I want to do it for like holidays or right. like special edition. Get- oh, things. nice. Like, do like a Halloween episode. Uh-huh. Do like a Christmas episode. Right. Thanksgiving one. And have like multiple people come back and uh-huh. like do like a best of. Oh, dude, that's great. Kind of like how Rogan does like the Save the Trees. Uh huh. I want to do stuff like that where okay. we have different themed episodes and have a whole bunch of right. people coming in here and just chat. Uh huh. Um, we did it a couple months ago for my birthday episode. Really? In July, okay. I had Roscoe, um, his, uh, Katie, with, uh-huh. with Roscoe, Katie, a lot, uh, Isaiah Blue. And me, we were gonna uh-huh. have Katie Style and uh-huh. Zach, Ingram, but then they had something come up the day of. Uh-huh. But I was supposed to have like six comedians here, and we uh-huh. were just gonna just like roast me and just chat. Yeah. And what I ended up doing is like I grilled pork steaks and grilled chicken. Oh, and we nice. had a we had a barbecue, Fuck yeah. and they came over here and talked for two hours. Oh, perfect! And I'm like, I want to do more of those. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I'm like, we should like everybody bring some sides like that, do like a little potluck or something like that. Absolutely, yeah. Have a fucking grill cookout, uh-huh. and then do a podcast that have some perfect. Beers. Sounds great, man. So, I have yeah. no, yeah. Well, I've, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna be drinking me some white claws. Yeah. Them dude, some, oh, dude, them some I can get fucked up on white claws. Oh, I have a white girl drunk on dude, white claws. They are delicious. I don't, you don't love feel them. bad. I don't give a shit yeah. if you feel like I don't care if somebody. Oh, those are. I don't give a fuck. They're delicious. Yeah. Well, you ever tried that, beer? Tastes like ass. Yeah. yeah. But and, all I that, mean, I, I get bloated I'll be an and shit ass too. A bunch like, too, but, but like, like, but like all the beers that makes me super bloated and stuff like that. Right. The White Claw, I can drink a whole fucking twelve pack of those. I feel great. Oh yeah, yeah. And then the they're day, dangerous. Oh yeah, the next day you're not hung over either because oh well, I mean I get a little hung over. I wish they were better. Like the most ingenious thing. We'll wrap it up here. Yeah. The most ingenious thing I ever saw was like you know Sonic. Uh-huh. Um, they had Sonic hard seltzers. And right. They had yes. like they had like the cherry yeah. limeade. And they had the ocean uh-huh. water and stuff like yeah. that. They weren't that great. No, they weren't good. But like the right idea, like uh-huh. honestly, like back in the day, mm-hmm. like we would all get 44, wrote 44 drinks of Sonic yeah. and just pour in a little like, mm-hmm. you know, crown apple or something yep. like that. My Absolutely. favorite thing to do, get a cherry for anybody that wants to fucking get fucked up on, uh-huh. a, you know, on a budget, go to Sonic, uh-huh. get a cherry slush with nerds in it uh-huh. and pour crown apple in it. Yeah. Crown apple and a cherry slush with that nerds in there. Uh-huh. Oh my fucking God. You will get fucked up and it is delicious. Uh-huh. It is like crack. Dude, I'll tell you what, like, I, when I'm on stage and I'm sipping on drinks and yeah. I can't, you know, pound my beer or yeah, something. Yeah, I can't, I can't I'll, get drunk I'll, before I perform. Uh, no, I can't hear. But when I'm on stage, you yeah. know, I have one or two, uh, I, I'll drink before yeah. uh, now because I, my, my shit's decent, but yeah. I can't get fucked up yeah. at all. But it loosens me up a little bit. And then when I get loose, you never know what's going to come out of my mouth. So I love that scenario. But there's a fine line. But, like, if I'm on stage and I'm sipping, dude, I... Am a f- huge fan of vanilla vodka and diet 
nice. whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, and it tastes, especially diet root beer or root beer, it tastes just like fucking vanilla root beer. Yeah. Oh, man, it's delicious. Those, That's my favorite right there. Nice. But, you know, I'll, I'll take a little bit. Mainly, though, I'm drinking Bud Light or yeah. uh, White Claws or something, but my Bud Light has to have a lime in it. I'm that I'm that much of a vagina. <laughs> I ain't kidding. I got to have Somewhere something to Kid take Rock's the taste. Reloading. Hey, fuck that guy. Who get, I met him, too. That's Kid Rock's going to be going against the lime in I met that son of a bitch. I ain't kidding you. Really? I swear to God. I'm sorry. No, it was when it was cool. It was it was in college. You, like, balled, you balled with a bod. I ball. balled with a bod. Yeah. That was during that time. But yeah. that's the next episode. Yeah, that's about that's yeah. so Brian, where can everybody find you if they want to book you? Or the, the great Brian Dixon. Well, I'm on TikTok at Tired and Swaggered. I'm starting my Instagram up, it, it, and it's uh, same thing, Tired and Swaggered on there. And then I'm on Facebook at Brian Dixon. I'm also got a YouTube page that I've ignored, but <laughs> it's called Dixon Cider Comedy. So you know, <laughs> now uh, you remember that skit back in the day? Uh, no, I when I was a pro wrestler, I had shirts that said Hard Dixon Cider. That was one of my mon- I was the brewmaster of the hard dicks. So you can cider. appreciate unloading meat. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no, I love it. And uh, but <laughs> well, on that note, guys, uh, we're gonna wrap it up here, guys. This has been the great Brian Dixon. I'm Jared Ralphie Allen. This has been unloading meat. Peace. My God.